Hello, hello again, friends and loyal Wolfpack members. Chaos Ruffian, welcome to this surprise stream. Yes. A um, little bit of a random stream today. I really should have been streaming uh, on this Monday and Wednesday, but I kind of didn't. Kind of realise it's about time that I did this. So, uh, hello chat. How are we doing today? As you can see, we are here with Commander Mel Reynolds. And what we're doing right now is basically moving this series along a little bit because we've kind of left him a little bit ignored for the past while. And that's not good. So, right at the moment we are currently in the middle of nowhere. Right. Here we go. We are right here. But we're jumping over to our last nebula of our trip. The Amiga Nebula. So we're going to go there, we're going to go check this out, and then we're going to go and head back to the Kun system. Because we need to um, sell some exploration data. And I'd rather sell it to an engineer and get straight the way up to grade 5. The only issue is, is we're going to need some Soontil relics in order to do this. And in order to get those, I'm going to need to swap some bits out on the ship. Because I don't currently have any cargo bays at all. Now, hopefully, everyone can hear me perfectly fine. Hello there, Mr. Dixon. How's it going? And considering that I already recorded a video earlier today about uh, landing my... I, I originally called it my Explorer Conda, but it's more along the lines of a search and rescue anaconda. Trying to land that ship on uh, a high gravity world. Not going to spoil how it ends. <laughs> but I will say it's... Uh, I, just, I decided to uh, attempt landing my anaconda on Akinar 3. And for those of you unaware what Akinar 3 is, Akinar 3 is a... Oh yeah, that's a thought. I want to scan this star. Akinar 3 is a 6.8G world, all but the kicking and screaming. And what is the jump range of this hauler? Let's have a look. It is around about 30-ish light years. 27.54. So it's not a bad little ship. Now the question is, what have we got here? Do 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 do. Anything useful? Potentially that one? Maybe not. Doesn't look like there's anything really of that much interest in this system. So, let's plot to the next system and move along. Now, I may sound a little bit nasally today. I have got a blocked nose, so uh, hopefully that's not going to be too distracting. And hello, Steve Ross. Everything is going fine. Right now, we're just moving Mel Reynolds along a little bit. And uh, Ken uh, uh, Michael Kennedy, you did that, you got 20% hull. Yeah, that's not fun. First time I tried it, we ended up uh, splashed down on a... I just noticed that my view account isn't working. So, all right, screw that. Let's get rid of that. Oh, well. And I just realized as well, we're scanning a B-class star here by the look of it. So let's move out of touch. Nothing else in this system. Warning. Temperature, critical. Temperature is critical, but we're far enough away that we should be fine. And let's scan this. Now, I'm probably... I'm convinced that this is... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, you're quite right, Super. That was the beer run. The first time I went there, I ended up fl uh, face-planting the, uh, the surface. But I was using a Type 9 full with beer. And uh, ended up making a beer crater. It was one hell of an Oktoberfest. <laughs> yeah, sure about temperature critical. We're getting away. Now, how many more jumps we got? Four more jumps to the Amiga Nebula. We can't. I can't even see the Nebula from where I'm sitting right now. Oh, you missed the last EDRPG stream, but you caught the video. 
When are we planning to stream live the next one? Uh, we stream it every two weeks, so it's not tomorrow, it's a week tomorrow. No, this isn't DDRPG. This is... Uh, I'm pretty sure I've got this set as Elite Dangerous. Unless, if it's coming up as EDRPG, then I have no idea. I changed everything beforehand, so it shouldn't be coming up as EDRPG. But it wouldn't be me if I didn't screw something up. Oh, wait, I know. I forgot to change the thumbnail, didn't I? That's the thought. Yeah, I'll change it for the video after. Uh, okay, change thumbnail. Can I change the thumbnail now? That's the question. Adam Kennedy, thank you very much for the new subscription. It is greatly appreciated. And I am in the wrong folder. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Uh, elites. Thumbnails. Uh, exploration. That one. Let's change it to that one. Right, hopefully, it's going to show up correct from now on. Because I completely forgot. To, that's the one thing I forgot to do, is change the thumbnail. But then again, it wouldn't want to be one of my live streams if I didn't screw up somehow. <laughs> yeah, 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 critical temperature. We've got a bunch of stuff in this system, actually. What have we got? Nothing of much interest. How long does it take you to do 460 jumps? Sorry for the random question. Ugh, that'll take a while, actually. And where are you going with 460 jumps? Sounds like you're trying to go all the way to Beagle Point. But what I would recommend there, if you're, try if you're doing something like that, is check out the, uh, I think it's the Spanch website. I have no idea how you pronounce it, or how, even how you say it, or even how you spell it. But just Google the Neutron Highway and it'll be one of the first uh, websites that pops up. And what this will do is you put your start your start point, your end point, and um, what it'll do is calculate all the jumps of Neutron Stars from where you are to where you're going. Oh, and you have to put your ship jump range in as well. And it'll try and get you the most the best route there. It's way better than using the one in uh, in-game. The one in game sucks a little bit. Uh, first time you stumble upon the live stream? Oh, I'm... Well, welcome to the stream then. Now, uh, let's have a look. Nothing, again, of too much interest currently. What server am I on? I'm in the Wolves of Jonai server, yes. And we're in the middle of absolute... Well, I say the middle of nowhere. We're actually on the way to the Amiga Nebula. Two jumps out. And I still can't see the nebula from where we're standing. I cannot see it at all. It's a dark nebula. Oh there, Cass Mulder, how's it going? And everybody else that's joining? How are we all doing today? You brought a sidey for nostalgia reasons and planning to jump back home system. Uh, 13 light year, 5 jumps, all oh, the memories, yeah. <laughs> I know. My cousin actually just started playing the game. And I did a little bit of work getting him some... Uh, basically a start-up. Uh, I started uh, getting a Sidewinder set up. I did him 5 missions. Basically, 2 runs. 1 mission with 4... 4 data, data transfer missions. And 1... Uh, moving some gold. So we ended up with a good amount of coinage. Right, anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Like I said, that's fine, uh, Cass. Like I said, I'm fine, but my nose is blocked. Uh, hay, hay fever's kicking in again for some reason. I would have thought it had been, um, it had been gone now, but no, no, no. It's hanging on there with a vengeance. And you got to leave, John? All right, fair enough. <laughs> Will I ever do a Pimp My Kill Back video? I can't stop doing the Pimp My Ride videos. Uh, no idea why, I just did. <laughs> 
But so many people these days seem to be more interested, uh, well, a lot of people these days seem to be more interested in stock ship build, well, it's not stock ships, but unengineered videos than anything else. And as soon as I get some money up on my main account, I will start doing those again. Yeah, I'll always do whatever I can to help out newer commanders, but he's, he was family, so, yeah. And here we go, we are now inside of the nebula. What have we got here? Just a pair of stars, and they are, they have been discovered previously. But again, I can't see much in this system. Right, how far are we away from the opposing star? Yeah, that's a good ways out. So, not much else in this system. But let's move out, because where are we right now? It, no, wrong one. That one! Okay, we are kind of in the dark. No wonder we couldn't see anything. We we're approaching this nebula from the dark side. So I kind of think we might need to jump somewhere up here. And why can I not? Ah, that's why. Uh, star class. There we go. That's looking way better. Um, that's probably a little bit too far out. What I'm thinking is maybe this one might be an idea to go and have a look at. Just went to Obsidian Orbital for the first time. And Palin wants to pay you 15 mil to get Thargoid stuff. Yeah, yeah. apparently that's one of the best ways of making money at the moment. Is getting Thargoid materials. Uh, the new root planner struggles getting over the abyss. However, 17, uh, sorry, 7k from Beagle Point you found a path. Alright, okay. How's my shoulder? My shoulder is fine. That's not the issue I've got today. The, my today issue is my stomach muscles and my back muscles. I was at the physio yesterday for an intense workout. I'd won the day before. Forgetting that I was going to the physio the day after. So I am sore as all hell today. And I'm going hiking tomorrow. So that's going to be interesting. Sounds like we've got Thargoid stuff in this system. I'm wondering whether it's a good idea to try and find a Thargoid on this account. Just to say we did. How far away is that one? That's not that far out. So let's scan this one and move over to the second one. I wonder if we're going to find any non-human signal sources in systems out this far. I've not really tried this at all until, well, ever. Tell you what, one of the things I'm really looking forward to next year is some of the changes coming to exploration. One of the things that was talked about at the expo was a... Uh, what's what I'm looking for? It's a... Go on, brain. Kick in. Uh, a codex. Basically detailing all the things you found at the system and kind of giving kind of vague hints that you might be able to find something else in the system. So that'll be interesting. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how they implement that. Now, what I'm not wanting is having something that goes, oh, there's something else in this system. Nudge, nudge, look over there. Kind of thing. Because that kind of takes out a lot of the exploration, explorey kind of nature of the game. And there we go. That is everything scanned in this system. And that's actually spin about and have a look look at that that is some beautiful beautiful nebula there and hello there Derek C uh, don't worry about being late we only, we've only we only been up for I have no idea oh 60 minutes so we've not been up for very long uh, this was a bit of a surprise stream so I'm not surprised but today we are flying around in Mel Reynolds just doing some more exploration. We are in the middle of the Amiga Nebula at the moment. 
and it's a very very purple nebula as you can see um so wiser you're asking uh, do the addition of the new ships in the beyond season sound like f dead pandering to the to the fan base no not really not to me um uh, but I will admit that the f my first thought when seeing them was uh, my first thought was this is Frontier going, huh okay, we can do Star Citizen as well, and get it done before Star Citizen comes out because <laughs> they do look very Star Citizen ships, and I have a feeling it's they're they're being put into the game more to appeal to the Star Citizen crowd and pull them into this game away from Star Citizen than actually creating new ships in the Elite Dangerous universe. Now, Elite Dangerous is probably still going to be going for nothing but the symmetrical ships. And Why am I pressing that button? It's the wrong one. So, I don't suspect... Uh, so, I'm just trying to find a decent system to go and have a look at. This one looks good. Let's go there. Now, I've lost my train of thought as well now. Uh, where was I? What the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah, that was it. I don't think Frontier's ever going to do the uh, the asymmetric ships like they have in Star Citizen. But I think they're going to have some ships are there just to kind of appeal to these uh, to the, the Star Citizen fan base to draw, to draw them over. And I've got nothing against that because I do like the way the, the Chieftain looks. There's current speculation that the Hunter, one of the books, uh, one of the one of the ships from the concept book, or some concept art from concept image from the art book, yeah, that one. Good English chaos. Um, I do think that's been around for a while, and that looked very Star Citizen for a long time as well. But there's speculation that that's going to be one of the new ships that's going to be coming in in the Alliance Navy. But speaking of Alliance Navy. Um, the the uh, the navy with the most amount of ships currently is the empire is it the empire I think. yeah it is because they've got the imperial eagle they've got the courier the clipper and the cutter and how's my x52 it's great it's still very stiff <laughs> i love this uh, i love my controller although it's bugging out a little bit yeah nothing much in here so let's get a better look further out from the star We'll head over this way, go to scan that one, maybe. But I just want to get uh, get away from the light pollution of the stars so we can see the nebula in all its glory. It already looks like things are going more purple, though. Uh, for what new ships am I looking forward to the most? I'm currently looking forward to the crate, because I'm really curious as to what that's going to be. Uh, from current estimates, it appears to be like halfway between the size of a viper and a cobra. And have I ever tried Elite in VR? Yes, I did. I tried it once. And wow. Look at that. Yeah, we found a system where the nebula is extremely vivid. Look at that purple. That's awesome. And yes, I have tried Elite in uh, VR. It's at EGX uh, a few years back. Yours have been a bit twitchy recently as well. I think it was the recent Windows 10 update. Uh, I'm in Windows 7 still, because uh, I'm giving up Windows 7 when they when they pry it for my cold dead fingers. But what's happening with me is every time I reboot the game or bring the game back up, the dead zone which I put into the yaw is gone. So I keep rotating slightly to the side, which is rather aggravating. Use it at home, but only for short sessions. Yeah, I only had a very, very short attempt at it. I want to get VR for Elite, but don't have the money for it at the moment, and I probably could do with upgrading my graphics card. Currently running on a 970OC, but I wouldn't mind upgrading it a little bit to get something a bit more beefy to get the frames out that you'd need for VR. But yeah, no, um... The question is, what do you guys think of the ships that were, well, the ships that were announced at um, 
at the Frontier Expo. I'm hyped for them because it means, yay, more ship reviews. <laughs> more things to look at and more betas to look forward to. Also the Type 10 Defender. I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to, uh, to work. Uh, and yes, I have the, mount, the Monster Tech mounts for my X-52. Are they worth it? You're sitting on the fence about them. I love them. I think these are great. They, l But I've got a fairly high desk as well. Because these actually lower my flight sticks down, it puts up a nice comfortable height for my shoulders where I'm not damaging my shoulders anymore. The only issue I have is that it pushes them even further, it pushes you even further back from your desk. And usually that's not as much of a problem, but because my desk is... Uh, it's a dedicated gaming desk from Ikea. So my screens are pressed pretty, pushed pretty, pretty far back, so I have to keep pushing my chair a bit further back. But other than that, I'm very happy with them. It means I can just demount and move my hotas around when I'm not using it. You just have the ear, uh, you, you, you just HTC two days ago, and damn, it's a new game. It looks, yeah, it does look. I, I, I actually had the one I had to go off was the, the Vive as well. So, uh, yeah, it was great. And am I yawing again? Let me go and double check. Options, controls. Is this doing it again? Flight rotation, your axis. Yeah, it's done it again. The yaw keeps, uh, the yaw dead zone keeps just disappearing. I set the dead zone, click apply, and it just disappears after like about 20 minutes. It's really annoying. And that was just a brown dwarf. Uh, we've got a couple of planets around it. I'm not sure if I'll bother scanning them. Have they been scanned previously? Probably. Yes, they have. Alright. Okay. Well, what I'm thinking is we're not going to find much in this nebula. Might want to go and look a little bit more towards the bottom down this direction. So I'm thinking maybe that one. Let's go there. And then we'll start heading back, I think. Which way are we going? We're going this way. So let's see. New ships look cool. Really looking forward to blowing them out of the sky. <laughs> you hate the alliance after they did, after what they did to River. Oh yeah, wrong cross, wrong uh, wrong series there. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, you play D in the Rift because a couple of months now, 1050 Ti and i7 770, uh, 7700. I mean, awesome stuff. Yes, loads of settings on low, but damn, it looks great. Yep. Posh boy, eh? IKEA. <laughs> Can only dream of Ikea down here in the mud. <laughs> oh, hello there, Mr. Nordic Pagan. How's it going? You know what? I really need to do another, really, another XCOM stream at some point in the near future. Right. Did I scan this? No new astronomical things. Yeah, I did scan. So, nothing new here. So, what I'm going to do then... First of all, delete that. Yes. Plot a route all the way back to Martuk. There we go. Oh no, temperature is critical. Whatever shall we do? Let's just fly away. Come fly with me. Come fly. Let's fly away. Sorry. <laughs> Let's not turn this into a musical number. Um, I have tried setting the dead zones in the external software, but the external software doesn't keep the dead zone. It, because uh, Elite seems to bypass the external software. Because I originally set them in the external software and it did not translate through into Elite. Um, also bear in mind that if you are short sighted you can uh, you need to use glasses in VR or use lenses in VR. Yep, 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 that's true. I do actually need glasses for that, so yes. By the way, you really like the chieftain? Not much 
not much the other one. Uh, so you're not a fan of the crate? I like the crate. Seems to have a bit of a weird cockpit position. Which I don't mind. Some people are thinking that it's going to have some weird uh, issues with its peripheries, peripheral view. But it seems like the cockpit's actually set below the two wings either side. I like the look of that. And it's just typical, they're bringing the crate into the game, or they announced the crate in the game, just after I sold my crate in EDRPG. <laughs> but I am thinking as well, I did, I'm pretty sure I scanned the system, I did indeed. Nothing much of any interest here. And so what I'm thinking about uh, the Chieftain, so on looking at it, is it looks like it's going to be a very agile ship for its size. I'm convinced that it's going to be a medium ship. I don't think it's going to be a large ship. And what I'm thinking is because it's got its mass, kind of most of its mass concentrated in the centre with its nacelles providing all the maneuver, all the manoeuvring. I think it's going to be very, very manoeuvrable. And Wise is asking, is healthcare in Norway free like in Britain? Not quite. It's partly like that. You have to put it's it's subsidised, and you have to pay a little bit towards it, unless you go private. But after you pay the certain amount, you get what's called a free uh, free court, uh, which means that everything else for the rest of the year is free for you. And the side tech software worked best for you. All right, okay, Lizard King. We don't know what it'll be like until we get there. No, you're quite right. I'm just speculating. Uh, the Chieftain's your, yours or else nobody else is allowed to have one. I'm pretty sure I'll get to play with it first. But I intend to review everything on the beta server. Uh, what else have we got on system while I'm standing here? Again, nothing of great interest. There we go. That's that red dwarf scanned. Now the question is, how many jumps we got? 220 jumps. Wow. That's a good amount of jumps. Don't think we're going to be doing that today. Uh, oh well. But yeah, no, I reckon that the Chieftain is actually the middle tier of the Alliance Navy. I'm curious as to how many ships they're going to be bringing in. Because like I said, the Empire at the moment is... Actually, I don't know. Because the Federation's got the, the the drop ship, the assault ship, the gunship, and the and the corvette. So that's four ships. Empire, they've got Imperial Eagle, Imperial Courier, Imperial, Imperial Clipper, and the Cutter. So that's four as well, isn't it? Unless I'm missing one. Pretty sure that's it. So are they going to be bringing in uh, four ships straight off the bat? And if so, how are they going to be making them different? Hello, Mr. Opie. How's it going? You could be tight. Could be tight today. Oh, yeah. I somehow don't think we're going to manage it. But, oh, well. We'll see, because we're only scanning the main star unless there's something interesting in the system. And I'm not exactly using the neutron boosts back. I could, I suppose. Question is, though, have I even got that set? Let's have a look. Oh, no, wrong, wrong one, wrong map. It's that one, isn't it? Uh, let's select the jet cone boosts. There probably are no jet cone boosts. Let's see. I dropped down a couple, so maybe I'll have a couple of jet cone boosts. We'll have to see. Hello, Mr. Opie. Okay, hello there. How's it going? Hope all is well. Yes, everything is fine, apart from a slightly blocked nose and sore muscles from too much working out. And do I speak Norwegian? And do you hold dual citizenship? Well, first, uh, first, uh, first, uh, you are not a Norsk. Oh, no, I don't have a bag of bar for Storbritannia. Yeah, and my Norwegian is absolutely terrible, I will point out. But yes, I do speak Norwegian. Some amount. Mainly work, uh, mainly um, learn to work. But, eh, there we go.
I made that up. Google Translate it then. <laughs> Hello there, JSB. How's it going? Right, let's move on. Yes, no, I need to practice some uh, more Norwegian. Uh, I've only taken one. Uh, the, technically, this would be three. I think it's three. It's either three or five uh, sets of Norwegian core uh, classes you can go and take. I've only had. I've, I've only had the first ones myself. The rest I learned at work. But it's the common conundrum: if either haven't got the time or you haven't got the money to do it. Right now, I've got the time, just not the money. And have I tried the Oculus with the Elite? No, I haven't. I only, I've only, I've only ever tried the um, the Vive. And all their Elite Craft. How's it going? Now I saw another star pop off in the distance. A little red dwarf, or brown dwarf potentially. It's probably a red dwarf. But yeah, that'd be that one. And again, nothing massively interesting. We've got some Jovians and some gas giants, but I'm not overly fussed with them. Oh yeah, that's a thought. I should probably fuel scoop while we're here. Now, the weird thing with my Norwegian at the moment is I sound very much like Yoda. <laughs> when I'm talking Norwegian. Yeah, no, it's not good Norwegian at all. Like I said, I've only taken the first core, I've heard the first set of classes. I haven't taken the the the, the, the rest of the sets. And you've you uh, have tried it already into you. It looks pretty good. You ca you just can't play on VR. It gets uh, terrain locomotion because you're a bit sensitive to motion sickness apparently. All right, fair enough. Well, flying ships, it's all good. All right, fair enough. I tried doing um, trying to use VR with one of those headsets and my phone. Problem is, is, I couldn't get it to work properly. It worked a little bit, but the resolution was so tiny it was ridiculous, so I just gave up on the idea. I'm not exactly the biggest of tech gurus. Right, I don't think we've got anything else interesting in this system. No, not really. Yeah, 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 we're fine. Fly away from the star. Start cooling down. There we go. There we are. But the thing is, it's because I had the um, uh, the Sam the Samsung goggly thing is I forgot what the hell it's called. But because I have got a Samsung, I've got a, a Galaxy, so I plugged it into that thing, and just using the Oculus technology through that installed on the phone. You can have some kind of weird little VR thing where you can look around and do some gamey kind of things and that. But trying to connect it to the computer is an absolute nightmare. Even then, just with any other technology and that, uh, any other software on that, uh, that particular phone, it was a nightmare. It did not want to work. I could not get it to work for love and the money. Gave you mad vertigo and parts as well. I don't doubt it. I mean, I'm curious to try... I'll, I'll be curious to try Lone Echo in uh, VR simply because well it's well, first of all it's a VR game but not only that but sometimes the sense of scale in that thing is absolutely amazing all right nope because I'm watching jingles playing that one it's a bit of a pain in the ass because you had to rebind keys to your hotas again other than what you liked yeah I can imagine I don't, the vast majority of my keys are set to my HOTAS anyway. There's only a few keys which are set to my uh, to my keyboard, and those are ones that I can quite easily do without. It's basically like the maps and stuff. 
and target next next system in the job chain. Yeah, apparently it can be connected to the PC, but it's a nightmare to actually get it to display anything. I had enough of it. I gave up on it in the end because I'd, 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 I'd had enough. Should there be more cockpit chair varieties? There probably will be in the future. I don't imagine uh, chairs be something that they microtransaction. But the thing is, people wanted microtransactions. I I'm happier with them. Because I don't care if I have to pay for visual enhancements because they're not mandatory. And let's not forget, anybody that owns Horizons is getting the whole of uh, Beyond for free. So you can't really complain about microtransactions, really. Because they are optional and we're getting an entire season for free. So I still can't understand why people are whining about this. And can we play this on Android? I don't know. Elite Dangerous is very optimised. Uh, you can pretty much play it on a toaster. I mean, I can play it on a really old laptop, uh, admittedly, like re fairly low frames a second and set to, mi uh, set to minimum. But it does work. Even my cousin can play it on his, on his computer, and his computer's crap. Uh, did I back ED on Kickstarter? No, I didn't. I didn't even know it was a thing back then. I only found out about it while it was in beta. And back then, I had almost no money, so I was... Uh, I... Um, what was it? Oh, brain. Yeah, I had very little money, and I'd, I'd literally been paid on the day, the last day, that this game was available for, for beta. So I, I bought the game on the last day it was available to get into the beta and, this, and thus get into the gamma. Oh, somebody got this working on Raspberry Pi? It would not surprise me. Somebody apparently managed to get it working on a, uh, a, a PlayStation Vita or something, but I suspect that was something to do with streaming between a PS4 and the Vita. Now, did I scan this? I can't remember. Let's see. Uh, well, your lunch breaks, it, your lunch break is on, is on. You'll be back in an hour or so. If you're still streaming. Oh, I should be streaming in about another hour or so, Mr. Opie, so don't worry about it. Mr. Moore says, shame the beta is only on PC. It would be good to have beta on PS4. So, PS4 so. Yeah, it would be. The problem is it costs Frontier way too much to be able to do that. And it'd take too much, too long to get things like that done because they have to go through. It's the same reason why it's not done with Overwatch. And uh, ID crisis. Let's see. You've got Anaconda, but not the money for upgrading it. What's the best way for you to earn a lot of money today? Well, apparently, if you go to Obsidian Orbital out in the Maya system, um, Palin is paying you anything up to 15 million per mission for picking up Thargoid materials. So apparently that's a great way of making some money. I may have to go and do that myself on Chaos. Especially considering I just... Uh, oh, was the Raspberry Pi and April Fool's joke. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. Alright, what have we got in the system? Ooh, Waterworld potentially. No. That is a high metal content, but it is... It does have an atmosphere. So let's go and have a look. Now I'm rather curious to see if we're actually going to find any Thargoids out this far. I haven't seen any single sources this far out. Even the degrade modules are worth engineering. Oh, yeah. If, if you're trying to get more jump range, degrade stuff is definitely worth engineering. I mean, I did a video early. Uh, I've recorded a video today. I haven't actually re edited or rendered it yet. But it will be going out either t today or tomorrow. And it's me trying to land my anaconda from my Explorer Conda build onto Akinar 3. 
And for those of you unaware of what Akinar 3 is, it's a it's pretty much as cl as near as damn it a 7G world. It's basically 6.78 Gs. And I didn't know that. Uh, you didn't do that until someone told me uh, way after. Indeed, paling paling is. Uh, and doesn't tell you how to do it. I, you had to come here and figure it out. Fair enough. Yeah, I know. It won't tell you how to do it, but it depends what materials he's after. And it is a high metal content world. I was correct, but is it terraformable is the question. It is not. The rest of those are either going to be a rocky or icy world, so I am not going to bother with them. Now, hello there, Mortemain. How's it going? And, uh, and ID Crisis says what? Well, you got yourself the Oculus Rift. And there's some sale with touch controls and the Xbox 2 Pro. And holy shit, it's a di completely different experience to play Elite Dangerous. Yep. Yeah. And the hours fly away. Yeah, I don't doubt it. You thought up until now the pie thing was real. Never mind, thought it was. Uh, even though it was a joke, seems to be a logical kind of joke. Yeah, alright. And if you have no money to get uh, A grade, you can still improve D grade drives with dirty or clean tuning. Even grade 3 at far series. Yeah, it is very much. And good luck on the on a 7G landing. Well, I've already done it. I'm not going to spoil how it turned out. But uh, it was stressful. Let's put it that way. And bearing in mind... This uh, Explorer Conda, in the biggest air quotes possible. Technically, it's more of my uh, search and rescue anaconda these days. Uh, bearing in mind, it can it can mount up to class uh, up to size seven thrusters, and I've got class five five Ds installed. They are grade five dirty drived, but they're still only class five thrusters on the on a ship that mount, mounts class sevens. Three units of Thargoid technology samples. Yeah, you can get those from the bases quite easily. Just make sure you've got a Thargoid sensor to get into the base. Although, I'm not even sure if you can get them from outside by destroying the... Um, uh, destroying the... Scavengers. Because I know you can get something from them, but I don't know if it counts as cargo or... Because they count as materials, not cargo. I uh, know there are some things inside the base which count as cargo, so I'm not sure which ones he's actually after. Oh, you crashed a fully laden T9 onto a 7.5G world? Alright. Well, the first time I landed on uh, Akinar 3, bearing in mind, bearing in mind this is like nearly a 7G world, uh, I was flying a Type 9 with, two, uh, with the smallest thrusters I could fit, and I was loaded up with 500 tonnes of beer just for the fun of it. To make a long story short, we eventually I eventually ended up making a beer crater on that planet. I basically just made a new swing pool. So, good holiday. Now we ended up going back again as well. But the second time I went back, I made sure that I had the best thrust as possible and still man and just about managed to land it. And uh, ID Crisis is saying, yeah, you didn't play Elite for about a year, so you have no clue how engineers work. And at the moment, I feel there is a lot to learn to get into the game again. Yeah, well, thankfully, you've got people like me that have made a bunch of tutorials about all this kind of thing. I even have an engineer's tutorial. It's more of a basic tutorial about unlocking the engineers and moving and getting on that way. But it's not about uh, what the individual stats do. Because even some of those I'm not completely sure about. Yeah, I terraformed the place. <laughs> yeah, a new beer atmosphere. Sounds about right. The other thing we're missing now is chilli nuts and pretzels. Are oh, there Nebulous Gaming? How's it going? And speaking of ga thinking about gaming channels now, you know what I, no I noticed the other day, uh, well, earlier today actually, 
Um, one of the old Wolfpack, one of the old Wolfpack members, a guy called uh, Drax. He's got his own channel now, but he's over like over a hundred thousand subscribers because he just plays random games and stuff. He's, a fa he's finally decided to come back to Elite and start a new series called Zero to Hero, and I'm sitting there thinking, hmm. I uh, search on uh, YouTube. And it seems like everyone and their everyone and their dog and their dog's grandmother seems to have a series out called Zero to Hero. Yeah, I'm not bad there, Nebulous. I am doing all right. I've been complaining about sore, sore muscles today, but that's about it. Howls with wolves. Hello there. How's it going? I'm doing quite well. How are you doing good, sir? Although, we need to get out of the corona of this star, because we've already scanned it. Yeah, nothing in this system. But yeah, no, everyone, like I said, everyone seems to have a series called Zero to Hero. There seems to be at least three to five different YouTubers that have nicked my uh, series name. <laughs> oh well you're going to make a series called Zero to Hero where you go from a conda and lose it all back to a sidewind and, and a thousand credits <laughs> Muscles, gym. I work out at home, um, but uh, I'm also going to the physio. Oh, there's Snotty. How's it going? Flying mines official. The first thing I saw when joining you is flying directly into the sun. <laughs> yep. So one of the things we like to do is fly. Is aims for the stars. Quite literally, in fact. I'm doing a raw, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. The thing is, I'm not losing a Type Nine. Not this time around. All right. Do we have anything else in this system? I don't, eh, nothing too interesting. Uh, should power play add the Aegis Initiative as a as a player as a pledgeable power? I don't think so because I think power play is getting reworked next season anyway. In beyond, I suspect that power play is get is pretty much going to become completely superfluous because towards the end of um, the Beyond series of updates, we are getting squadrons, which is Elite Dangerous' version of clans, guilds, or corporations, however you want to call them. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's the thing that I'm most excited about, especially getting a uh, a carrier, a squadron carrier, so we can mount all our ships in there and uh, fly them from one system to another. That'd be awesome. It'd be great for when we're in war with different uh, with different systems. So I'm hyped about that. Looks like we'll be getting uh, squadron chat as well, so another tab. And maybe some new windows. I, I'm really hoping that we get based the kind of guild management that we had in um, uh, games like Age of Conan, Star Wars, The Old Republic, and so on. And how long have I been travelling this long this time around? I have no idea, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we've still got over 200 jumps to go, but this is Mel at the moment, and we've been going ever since the ever since the beginning of uh, Into the Black. So I've got no clue. How long we've been going for? And yes, uh, flying mines. We are we are exploring. That is exactly what we're doing, because this is Commander Mel Reynolds, and we're currently coming back from visiting three nebulae. We visited the Amiga Nebula, the Triffid Nebula, and the Lagoon Nebula. So we're heading back now to. Alvida Martuk. We need to go and grab some some soon till relics though. But I might get I might cheat and get another member of the pack to go and pick some up for me. 
Am I going to the new CG or something? Hell no. <laughs> I'm not going that far out. I mean, I could get there quite easily with my combat anaconda, because my combat anaconda has an over a 30 light year jump range. But I don't really want to do that. Because that's a long way to go. Just for combat. I'm, I was planning to go and do some CGs this week. But not the, not the ones that are all the way out in Colonia. Hell no. Hell to the no. And the trip this time's not been too bad, Snoddy. I uh, haven't come across any Thargoids. We're still at 99% hull. The only reason we dropped down below that is because I screwed up. Uh, in power play at the moment, uh, the individual powers really matter. Uh, the big three are somehow unimportant, right? Or am I missing something? Uh, they're not really that important. They're they're kind of like a mi they're kind of like a mini game inside of Elite that not that many people give a toss about beyond getting the modules. Ooh, wait, nope, got to stay looking that way. I need to unlock engineers. Yeah. Yeah, Mel's got absolutely zero on engineers properly unlocked. Let's have a look over. No, why am I, get, why am I doing that? Let's have a look. Here we go. We've only got the invite from Alvida Martuk. That's it. We've got nothing else. We've done no combat. We've done no trading. Um, we haven't got scout rank at all. And, yeah, obviously, so, yeah. This is the one account where I've got absolutely sweet FA unlocked. So there we go. Uh, Fly Miners, uh, recently you and a friend, a friend of yours, were trying to do Barnard's Loop. Very beautiful there. All right. Awesome. I haven't been there myself yet. But as the coal, se uh, coal 70 sector got permit locked, it's difficult going back. I can imagine... Thirty light year jump stock is a joke, isn't it? Um, really depends. Thirty light years is still a good jump range, but this is my combat anaconda with thirty light years. This is this thing's all to the teeth. So a combat ship with anything over twenty light years is a really good, a really good jump range. It was huge and it seemed like impossible to pass. Yeah, I don't doubt it. You got two invites, but you're new to it, uh, new to it all. Well, basically, you've got to go and pick up the uh, pick up whatever materials, cargo, or data they want as a buyout to start with. After that, you can start working with them. If you've got the materials for your engineering role, you can you can roll up with that engineer and get them to a higher grade. Every time you gra craft three or you roll three module upgrades of one tier, you'll move up to the next tier. So you can get to tier five uh, quite easily with only, uh, let's think, 12 rolls. If you've got all the materials you need. Hello there, Mr. Brooks, how's it going? And thank you, it is good to be back. Things have been a bit awkward since uh, the uh, since the expo because I've either been busy or really, really tired since I got back. Oh, bug it. Wrong button. I meant to press that one. Did I not scan this system? Pretty sure I did. Yep. Yeah. I did, and there's nothing here. There we go. Right, so the sector requires unknown permit, which means that frontier locked them for future features. Yeah, more than likely. Uh, just need uh, dragons. Oh, yeah. Has the RNG nature of the engineers been reduced? It has, but it's being reduced even further next uh, season of updates. What's happening in Beyond is that whenever you roll a new roll on a module, it's always going to be getting better. It's always going to be better than what you had previously. 
So that's what's happening um, next season. Uh, typically you explain uh, advert plays. <laughs> right, yeah. It is bloody typical, isn't it? Yeah, basically you can get to grade 5 with an engineer in 12 rolls if you've got the materials. You can get to grade 5 in a lot, uh, even more rolls if you just grind a load, load of grade 1s, which are extremely easy to do. It just takes a bloody long time. Yeah, no, more man, we've still not got space legs. Apparently we are getting it, but it's going to be a lot further down the line. Hello, Pixel. How's it going? Are we still really busy and can't stand around, uh, stick around for too much? Right now, we are just getting Mel Reynolds back to the bubble at the moment. I mean, we're just under 200 jumps to go, so I don't think we're going to be doing that all today. We might, we've been streaming for about an hour and we've only done about less than 30 jumps so far. Beyond felt lacklustre? I don't see it as such. I'm really looking forward to a lot of the stuff that's turning up. But these are just the things as well. And don't forget more to me, but these are just the things that they've announced so far. Don't forget Frontier's great at uh, packing in loads of extras all the time. But it's also a free season of updates, so I'm not... Compl uh, they could just work on the main core mechanics, and I'd be happy with that. Well, I say it's a free season of expansions. So you have to have um, uh, horizons in order to to access it. But yeah, so I'm curious as to how this is going to go. You'll stick around for a little bit. All righty. Did I actually scan that? Yeah, I did. What we got in the system? Sweet FA. That's of any use. Uh, let's get going. A lot of these systems seem to be really boring. I know you're always busy, Pixel. And here we go. Oh look, it's Commander Outlander's Pixel. It is indeed Super Death. Yeah, so much will be coming in beyond. Stop worrying. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worrying about uh, beyond at all. Not only are we getting an entire new fleet of ships, which I'm guessing is going to be at least three to four ships. We're getting the... Uh, we're also getting the crate. And I suspect we're probably going to be getting a bunch more ships as well in this season. These are just the ones that they're telling us about right now. Uh, what's my plot on power play at the minute? It's kind of pointless unless you want specific material, uh, specific modules. That is my view on it right now. I'm kind of hoping that when Squadrons comes in, they ver they kind of do away a little bit with power play, and they kind of work it into the squadron kind of thing, where you can have like you your squadrons can hold certain parts of space. That'd be a lot more engaging for me. Uh, did I scan? Pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. I keep forgetting whether I scanned when I come in. Yeah, free is awesome, definitely. Yeah, you're totally looking forward to the Alliance ships. Uh, finally makes them ca makes them catch up. It does indeed. But up until now, the Alliance has never had a standing navy. But I think this, because this is set in the future of from any other previous Elite Dangerous games, I think it's about time that the Alliance finally got their shit together and started uh, working on the Navy. You're really hoping to get atmospheric landing with planet side life? That's not going to be happening for a while. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be coming in the next... Uh, I, I think it'll be coming in a while, but I th to personally, I'd rather get space legs before atmospheric landings. I think it'd be terrible being able to land on a planet and not be able to get out your ship. So I think space legs really should be further up on the line, but let's not forget there's ten years a ten year development cycle on this. And I, what I'm guessing is this Beyond season of updates isn't actually built, isn't actually counted 
into that 10 year plan. I suspect that Beyond is mainly because a lot of come out, a lot of people have shown uh, disple displeasure with the way Frontier have been doing things, and not happy with how things have been handled. So I think that's as why that's another reason why uh, Beyond is f uh, a free update to Horizon owners, not just another way of pushing pushing Horizons for those commanders that haven't got it yet. And I don't no no we're not going to be getting legs anytime soon. Most likely in about two years or something. At least I hope so. They did say it was going to be much further down the line, but I hope we get it at some point. Because I'm not expecting Sarsitan to ever become a thing, at least not for the next, like, five years. And by the time it gets here, it'll probably be completely irrelevant anyway. Hi oh, there, Chris Wu. How's it going? Three or so goid factions in it. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I don't think we're going to get that many times soon. Once we get space legs, people will moan uh, that it's a grind to walk around the ship, walk around space stations, and contact some missions. Elite isn't. Yeah. Well, people. The thing is, you kind of can't can't rem have to remember this is the internet age now. Everybody's a whining little asshole these days. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people are. And it really aggravates me. Because if they like playing the game, stop why stop complaining about it. I enjoy this game, so I don't I don't I very rarely complain about anything to do with this game. Yes, Elite Dangerous is a time investment game, you're quite right. You think you'll get a, an FPS shooter bit first? Eh, entirely possible. Five years, that's going to really sting. It's been in development for almost that, uh, almost as long already as yes it has, but it's constantly being put back, constantly. It's that massive misallocation of resources and so on. Because uh, Chris Roberts, instead of actually working on core gameplay and stuff, he's spending money on stupid things like alien languages and so on, which. Yes, it's nice, but you don't need it. You really do not need it in a game to begin with. Right, anything else? Nah. You want giant space worms as bosses? Living in giant asteroid dungeons? And they can, uh, they can protect a bounty of uh, space loot. Yeah, yeah. That's not at all um, Star Wars-y at all. <laughs> if everything was given to you like easy money or easy engineers then it would be over too quickly I already think that engineers are too easy as it is now the only issue I've got is trying to get the materials for them so occasionally it's only the rarer materials like the data mine wake exceptions they can be a pain in the butt to get and only because it takes a certain amount of time to get them just because it's also RNG based Uh, it would be great if you could combine two slots in the ship. Also, two, three bays. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But I wouldn't mind a um, a bay converter or a bay uh, something like that. Uh, I'd like to have something where you could where you could uh, split them down, like have a class three, put in a bay converter, um, and have two class one slots and a class three. That'd be awesome. We'll have a class five and split it down to two class twos. That'd be great as well. But um, combining slots into something bigger, I don't think they're going to do that. Right, what we got here again? Nothing overly interesting. But th these stars. There we go. Why? What's going on with these textures now? There we go. That's that was weird as all hell. Alright. Yeah, the module slots, that would be epic. Uh, I like the idea because then you could have... You could outfit ships with much more... Lo uh, m much better. I mean, if you've got a ship with a class 3 slot, you can use that one class 3 slot to have both of your... Uh, um, 
pl uh, uh, discovery scanner and detail surface scanner in there. You wouldn't need to take up two larger slots wasting space. That's the one thing I hate is wasting space. Yeah, exactly as Trooper says. I've only just realised that you said that there. The LD confirmed planning 2.5 and beyond. It's not 2.5, it'll be 3.0 actually, I think. At least I hope so. And where am I heading? We're currently heading back to the bubble. We visited three nebulae. We've hit we've hit the Lagoon Nebula. Then we went and ha hit the Triffid Nebula. And today we actually hit up the Amiga Nebula. Now we're on the way back. Oh yeah, and they were too hot, Snoddy. You're quite right. Yes, as an option to split class three, uh, class three into uh, into three class ones. Uh, it would. I don't think it'd go that way. What I think is you'd have to use up so much space in order to maintain a stable uh, a stable mount for the other two. It basically just an adapter, a um, a module adapter. So it would have to be reinforced. So you'd have to use at least one one class space in order to fit the other two. So I think that'd be a great balancing factor. Because splitting a class three into three into three class ones, I think that'd be a bit too broken. I'd be happy to have it into cl two class twos, basic not two class two, two class ones, a class three into two class ones, a class five into two class twos, and maybe a class seven into two class threes. And I think it should only be possible with odd numbered, um, odd numbered bays. Yeah, you're quite right there, Spaceman. That's what I'm thinking. It would definitely help explorers. You're quite right. As we were discussing, you could be able to put uh, both your uh, scanners into one slot with this uh, slot adapter. And uh, this bay adapter. Could be an engineering thing. Convert three holes into two C1. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be wor that'd work it. But I think it should be a temporary thing, because you can get adapters that you can just slot in, they'll clip in, and then you can clip the other ones in through it. But you'll have to have the adapter in place because of all the extra wiring and stuff that'd have to go in there anyway. Because yes, the, all these ships in Elite Dangerous are built to be modular. And this kind of just expands on that modular theme. Yeah, base splits could be an engineer thing, but I, th I still think that it should be just an adapter that you plug in. Because it's even more of a modular thing, because you can pull it out whenever the hell you want. Maybe you have to craft said thing to your ship or something, I don't know. But nothing, There's a lot of stuff in this system, but nothing all that interesting. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting a job at Frontier, but the problem is it's bloody expensive over in not, uh, wherever they're... Is it Nottingham or something? I can't remember where they're... Uh, where they're, um, their, main be their, their main offices are. If they were happy to pay my living expenses and everything, yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, scanning stuff as utilities would be nice as well, but it's the way it's set up, so. Oh, Nottingham is cheap. Oh, it's Cambridge. That's the one. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Spaceman. I mean, Dan, even. And putting two size one to the class three room is okay. Maybe two, maybe two size two and a, a size five. Yeah. Is he, uh, one ZZ space is the extra mounting for those items. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm thinking. The extra one is basically the... Because the one unit of... Or the the, the lost one class is basically used up as the... Uh, the mounting brackets and so on. Yeah, they've done Xeno scanners, but those, those that's like with... Um, Kilrant scanners, wake scanners and so on. 
Right, that's that complete. Anything in the system? It's only a brown dwarf or a red dwarf even. No, sweet FA. Sweet FA off. Oh, is it is it spa is it spouse to Spakerman? Yeah, yeah. No, not doing that, Mike TV. You can bag her off. For a job at Frontier, uh, you'd buy a tent. <laughs> I'll have to ask Super what he's planning to do. I'm pretty sure he'd applied for a job there, but I have no idea if he's actually been gotten back to about it. It's Nottingham, not uh, is Nottingham, not the place where Robin Hood uh, with Robin Hood and all. Yeah, that's where that was. Yeah, it was the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, you're quite right. right what are we doing? Here we go. Twenty-four. Let's see what we got. Anything interesting? Not massively. I mean, we could. Oh, actually, wait a sec. Go and have a look at this one. Have we scanned? Not yet. There you go. Now we've scanned. Let's go and have a look this way. Because this is a, just a brown dwarf star. But it has got a ring. It's not that far out. So let's go and have a look at that. I wouldn't mind finding a star that's a little bit warmer than this one. Basically, where we're going now, it looks like a brown dwarf. Which is the coldest of all the stars. Basically, the, the coldest thing that's achieved fusion. You think that it's weird that AB uh, advanced discovery scanners and detail service scanners are not utility mounts? Because you reckon that they should be outward point? Yeah, I suppose it might just be the software for it. Because let's let's be honest, to do that amount of calculations and stuff, you need a big amount of space for all the hardware. I suspect. What you need to do is to hire some NPC escorts from Mercenary Wing. That make the game complete. Yeah, be interesting. You'd love to see dedicated ship. Uh, oh. You'd love to see dedicated ships. Dedicated ships should have dedicated slots. Like damn it. Uh, yeah, I suppose that'd be interesting. Maybe we'll get that next season because they did say that uh, exploration was going to be getting some TLC. Would a bipedal, uh, bipedal assault mech piloted via telepresence be a good supplemental unit for space legs? I suppose, possibly. How far are you from the bubble at the minute? I'm a good ways out, I'm not sure. We'll uh, get to start scanning and we'll check. <laughs> Your typing is crap today. Don't worry, my typing's crap every day. Actually, there we go. We've started scanning. Let's slow ourselves down a touch. Let's see. How far are we away from home base? Boop. We are less than 5,000 light years. But well, that is 188 jumps. Well, not to there, but we're going to Alvina Martuk instead. Because we need to go and get some soon till relics. But I think I might get a Wolfpack member to pick him up and meet us outside of Martuk's place because I don't want to risk getting interdicted and blown up. There we go. A Y-class brown dwarf. Let's get a touch closer and get into the... into the ring system around it. Looks like we need to bleed off a touch of speed. There we go. Much better. It's a very purplish star, actually. I really do like seeing stars with rings. I wouldn't mind seeing one that was a little bit warmer than this, though. Now, am I in a hole? Yes, I am indeed. And look, it's a star casting a shadow. Yes, rather amusing, but that's just how the game works, because it cannot... Uh, generate light sources from more than one. Uh, generate light from more than one source. 
Otherwise, it would kill everything. You on your phone? Yep, yep, that's fine. But yes, we are indeed in a hauler. This is Mel Reynolds, and I wanted to show that it is possible to explore in a very, very budget ship. Oh, look at that. That is kind of cool. Doesn't look like it's achieved fusion, really, does it? Did we get a good jump out of it? We've got about 27 light years out of it, so it's good enough. This thing is completely unengineered. No, no bells, no whistles, no nothing. It can boost, though. How far are you from home base? Pretty far. That's why you use... <laughs> That's why you use IKEA. Oh, boy. That was terrible. A new light and model coming and beyond, so hopefully it'll uh, look tasty. Yeah, entirely possible. But yeah, that is kind of that's kind of nice. I do I do would love to see a ring with star that isn't just. Oh, that's it. How many credits do I have now? That's a good question. There we go. We can just about afford the rebuy on this ship. We've got 145,000 credits on this account. We're completely harmless in combat, aimless in exploration. So whatever we get from handing in... Uh, yeah, that, that space one, that really was a level 10 dad joke. That almost turned it up to 11, I've got to say. Anyway. Oh. That was a good uh, guesstimate of which way we had to point. Should Sad Kruger make their own combat ships? SLF. Uh, you'd, you'd name them after Predator Marine Life. Alright. Predator Marine Life. Yeah, it could do. New account? No, I've had this account for ages. This is my Into the Black account. It's just that I've only used it for exploration. This is Commander Mel Reynolds. You're hoping they increase the density of asteroids to make them look better? Well, technically they're already more dense than they should be. Asteroid belts around uh, planets like this are nowhere near as dense as they actually as they appear in game. In real life, at least as far as we understand it, I think. <laughs> should IBM software actually work? Uh -huh. There we go. What have we got on system? Hopefully something interesting. Uh, nothing majorly. I mean, these things are kind of cool looking, but eh, nothing too... Nothing blue, which is all I'm stopping for these days. Because I want to get back as quick as possible. Do I still do experiment on my Corvette on the main account? Uh, well, I have just changed it up a little bit recently. I got rid of my multi-cannon on it and uh, put on another beam laser just because I was annoyed of having to keep swapping between loadouts all the time and I wanted to take shields down faster. But I don't do much with it, to be perfectly honest. I have I am swapping out the the fighters as well because I used to have Taipan fighters but I'm swapping them out for, cor uh, for, for condors. Mainly because the Condors can have fixed multi cannons, which are a lot better against uh, against uh, ship hulls. So it's just way easier to use those, and it'll help way more taking ships down once I've got the shields down. And hello there, Brawny Fanta. How's it going? Oh, look at that! We've got a boost. Is this a neutron star or a white dwarf? That looks like a neutron star. I wonder if this has been have been captured or not previously. It has. And it is a neutron star. It looks like some Swedish commanders managed to pick this up. 
Oh uh, well. Yeah. Which way is our way back? It's that way, isn't it? So let's work out where the exclusion zone is. I can't see the exclusion zone. So are my orbital lines on? Uh so I orbital lines, they are on. So why can I not see them? Because the thing is, one of the things I don't want to have happen is get too close to a neutron star. Right, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, God damn it. Right, where is that tail gone again? I've lost the tail. There it is. There we go. Got it. Let's get the hell out of here. So that has bumped our jump range up to 112 light years. That is nice. Looks small for a neutron. Well, neutrons are small. It was kind of a wimp. It was a very wimpy neutron star, I've got to say, though. So we have seen some ones that are a lot more energetic than that one. The wimpy ones are a bit of a pain in the butt. What do I think of the dolphin and belugas? Um, I like them. Not, uh, I do like the ships. I don't see the point in them much because it's very rare that I ever bother with luxury cabins, but they're not bad ships. And usually if I'm just doing exploration, I'll use my anacot... Not my exploration. If I'm actually doing any uh, passenger missions, I'll usually just use my anaconda because I can get there way faster. And the only type of cabins that I can't fit are luxury ones. Alright, what have we got? Just a couple of things. Oh, that was unexplored. Let's see why. Yeah, that's why. It's, uh, <laughs> three quarters of a light year away, maybe. Oh, it's a long way away, at least. Am I going to buy a Type 10 for experiment? I'm definitely going to check it, t test it out on the beta server. After that, I'm going to make my mind up, and, uh, make my mind up, and decide whether I want one on the main account or not. No, in fact, woo, it was in fact a neutron star. It said in the, uh, the 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 system map, it did say neutron star. White dwarfs are way bigger. White dwarfs are larger stars. The ones that look like pinpoints, they are the neutron stars. That's not the type of predator you're thinking of. Uh, fish and krill don't count. <laughs> Man eaters and toxin fish are the real deal. Alright, fair enough. Well, they could name after ta different types of sharks if they want to be a bit more on the nose about it. Imagine if they had one, uh, had a hammerhead one. Yeah, that was a bit of a weird neutron star, but white dwarves there do appear larger. The main body of the star is a lot larger than a white dwarf. Anything else in here? No. Looks like we've come across a rather uninteresting area of space. Let's fly over this one and have a look at the galaxy map and find out why. Ah, this will probably explain it. We're kind of entering the void between the arms. Where there's much fewer stars and much uh, not as many bright stars on the way through. So that makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, boost is a lot less on white dwarves as well. You only get a 50% boost on white dwarves, whereas you get a 300% boost from neutron stars. So in neutron stars, you actually quadruple your jump range in grand total. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm well aware that Hammerhead is very overused in sci-fi. It's probably why it was the first thing I could think of. 
But shark names are very well, very overused in the vast majority of things anyway. Yeah. Again, nothing overly interesting. Yes, Fanta, I am in a hauler. This is Mel Reynolds. This is the Mel Reynolds account, which is completely harmless, completely aimless, and only a dealer in trading, because that's what we use in order to buy the hauler. This is the Into the Black account. Drive charging. <laughs> Take a look at the ship names in the game. Yeah. Well, ship names actually became a thing after this account had already left. Uh, Pribilov. I just grabbed the wrong end of the stick on that one, uh, Malik. But yeah, st the point still stands. My look, yeah, this is my exploration account. Yeah. So I decided that it was about time that we did some more with this because I have been neglecting poor Mel for a while. So I thought, you know what? Let's get a couple of hours of streaming done. Get a couple of hours of progress made. We're not going to get all the way back because we've still got over 180 jumps left to go. Damn it! I can I forgot that I hadn't finished scanning. Alright, let's have a look at the system map. Again, nothing really useful in this system. I'm actually planning to upgrade this to Dimeback Explorer and just see how much jump range I can get out of it. I could go for an Asp Explorer, I suppose. But I think a Dimeback is a little bit more kind of fitting for Serenity. Which is what I do intend to name it. Yeah, I should do, Snoddy. Um, we've been out for a good long while, and I uh, and after doing an 8,000 light year trip, I ended up with a silly amount of money on Ducky. So I am convinced I'm going to have more than enough to pick up an Explorer, an, an, an ex, uh, dime back at a, a DBX. So I'm pretty confident we'll be fine. I'm pretty sure we'll have way more money than we need. But it's nice to have a couple of rebuys as well. Right. Let's have a look in here. Wow, it's the Lord of the Rings system. We have one that remains unringed. One unwed. One unwed planet. Everybody else has been wed at least like once or twice. That's like the, the red-headed stepchild. And that's just the general outsider of the village. But this system has been completely undiscovered. Not that I'm interested in scanning everything in here, though. Golden rule, don't fly ship without rebar. Yeah, I break that rule fair. I used to break that rule fairly often. Morning. Data before the payout increases are still in the old values before, like, two, uh, like before 2.3. All right. Well, even so, we're still scanning everything on the way back. So I, well, the thing is, uh, before 2.3, uh, I'm pretty sure this account started going out, it went out at around about 2.3, maybe 2.2, not sure. Now, well, Firefly, you've been uh, doing the road to riches and telling yourself it's not an exploit, not an exploit. Grips, knees and rocks back and forth. <laughs> oh, it looks like we might be having another neutron star, maybe. Oh no, it isn't. This is something very this is a very different beast altogether. So let's see. Have we got anything in this very young system? Whoa, lot of stars. Well, I'll say a lot of stars. Three of the same one. Three of the same class. And how how far are they apart? Way. Yep, we can definitely scan all these. I can scan this one without having to move from where I'm currently standing. Or floating. Flying. Uh, 
There we go, and then we just got to go scan the last one after this, and that'll be the whole system scanned. Road to riches aren't exploits. Uh, you can only do one at a time. Do one time, only 100, uh, 330 mil. Alright. If the thing is though, if anything even feels exploity to me, I won't even do it. And look, I can scan that one from not even moving really. With though, don't like doing those exploits, but you visited Quintance once and just left. Alright. Wu saying, uh, uh, by the way, Chaos Wolf, do you notice when you mid transit hyperspeed there is a star passing by? Yes, I have noticed that. No, the Corvette definitely won't pay for itself until you've already bought one. Then it'll pay for itself. You did a 21k light year uh, passenger mission to the core. 45 million for the mission, 11 million for the exploration. Uh, sorry, 11, uh, 110 million. Or 1100. No. Nope. 110 million. Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, 110 million for the exploration data. And that was 200 jumps to a commander out of fuel. Alright, fair enough. Oh, they're Thargoids passing by, are they? Okay. Well, Mal's not been hyperdicted yet. And I don't think that's likely to happen. Because I think uh, people would get too pissy with the Frontier if they're out exploring and, and got hyperdicted. Alright, this looks like a good candidate for... No? Okay, never mind. No, I won't say not, never, but if I did get uh, interdicted and killed by Thargoids in this ship, there'd be very little I could do about it. Yeah, you can stack Colonial missions and make them match your buttload full. No, they probably wouldn't hurt me, but not all of the uh, Thargoids are friendly. There are some darker ones that attack you on sight. Have I ever been to one of the, on one of those planned expeditions? I joined the Distant Worlds for like about two stops and then went off and did my own thing. And that was about it, because, yeah, the pace isn't terrible, but I like to do my own thing. Well, I definitely don't have anything on board they want, because I've got nothing on board in total, unless they're after my data. And if they just want my data, they're going to be lazy buggers and just not going to scan it themselves. Speaking of which, uh, nah, nothing interesting here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try and make the Dimeback Explorer run a lot cooler. I mean, the Dimeback Explorer is a massively cooler running ship to begin with. But I want to modify it to be so cold running that you can almost not spot it in... Um, it, it's, it's like almost invisible to any scanners. A stealth ship. That's what we want. And have I be, have I been attacked before in a high prediction? I've never. I haven't been high predicted since two point four. So uh, no, I, I I haven't. No, Snoddy. They look at your hauler, chuckle, and then leave. Oh right, thanks. It's not the size of the ship; it's how you use it. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, you go at 50. Yeah, the thing is, I think the Thargoids are only showing up around the Maya area at the moment. So I don't think I'm going to be seeing them this far out into space. At least in this direction. Bunch of stars in system here. 
you had a full cargo and they were content to just scan you. Yeah, well, Ducky flies around with anti-Thargoid weapons now. It's a bugger, though, because I can't defend... I, it's, I struggle to defend myself away from, uh, from any other human NPCs these days. And you've never been attacked when hyperdicted? Well, I've been attacked fairly often, but it's usually because I've instigated it. I'm a cheeky bugger and I will actually shoot them. At least with uh, Ducky anyway, because Ducky doesn't care. The only drawback is limited usage on PvP. Alright. Well, I don't like PvP anyway. I've never bothered with it. That's too far out for me to be able to bother with. I've never liked PvP. Really, unless it's like World of Tanks or something. And even then I can only tolerate it for so much. It's just too much of a salt fest. It doesn't, I, it's just, I've never liked the idea of just always having to prove myself better than somebody else. At least that's how it feels to me a lot of the time. I like team-based things. I mean, Overwatch, I love that. But even so, I can't play it for more than a great amount of time because I will get annoyed at it and I don't like it. Hello there, Stone Splitter. What we're doing? Currently, we are getting my third account, Mel Reynolds, back from his exploration trip. Although, we plotted a route all the way back, thanks to the new uh, 20,000 light year route plotting, and we've still got over 170 light years... Sorry, 170 jumps left to go. Actually, I keep forgetting to check this. Oh! Ooh! That... That's an Earth-like. Yep, that is definitely an Earth-like. And potentially a terraformable uh, high metal content right next door. Let's go and see. And it is, in fact, undiscovered. Yes, thank you, Snoddy. Well, let's see if it is, in fact, an Earth like it should be. It sounded like one. The question is, though, is it just uh, like a high metal content pretending to be an Earth like? So, how do you create another account? Just create another username and email. Um, I bought, I bought, I've bought uh, several different copies of the game to get the key for it, and it is an Earth like world. It is indeed. Uh, let's go and see. I think this is the... Uh, actually, let's get a bit of a closer look at this one. You've also found Earth Lights of the Rings? Yeah, I did that as well. That's what we call Planet Bob. Ooh, look at that. That is a gorgeous looking planet. Now, what would we name this planet, I wonder? Scan it? Already scanned it. It's been scanned already. It's only saying I'm going to explore because I'm targeting a different planet. Yeah, the payout for Earth likes is very good. Uh, although, you can get better payouts on terraformable water worlds. You keep finding ammonia worlds. Never used to. Now it seems there are more of them. Yeah, seems, seems, like, seems like it. Name it Steve. Alright. Maybe, maybe if we found it like a twin planet, we could call it Adam. Adam and Steve. Thargoid Prime. Yeah. Yeah, no, like I said, I don't like PvP all that much, so I've never I have never played even, I never intend to. That chick from Firefly, which one? Inara or um what's her face? Kaylee. Or even um Oh shit, I've forgotten the I've forgotten the other the other lass's name.
My brain's gone completely blank. Oh, the mechanic, Kaylee, yeah. Yeah, no, I wasn't thinking of Summer, uh, Summer's character. I wasn't thinking of um, River. I was thinking the black girl. I've forgotten her bloody name, the one that's married to Wash. I've forgotten her name. And I completely forgot about uh, River. How dare I? And let's see, was that one? No, it was the wrong one. This is the one I want to go and look at. But is that even terraformable? No, it isn't. That one might be, though. Let's go and have a look. The Nutter Woman? No, it's not. Zoe, that was it. Thank you very much, Red. Yeah, no, it wasn't River I was thinking of. It was Zoe. I just could not remember Zoe's name. Not the River Nutter, no. <laughs> it's probably been... A, it's, it's been a couple of months since I rewatched all of uh, Firefly again, so... It's probably getting to the point where I need to do it again to, refer to, to remind myself who the hell is who. Well, let's see. Is this terraformable? It is indeed. Terraformable high metal content. Yep. It's an Earth-like and a terraformable high metal. So, planet Adam and planet Steve. Uh, I've heard this one already, Lizard King, but carry on. How do you clean? How do how does a reaver clean? How do reavers clean their spears? Uh, you're no longer a brown coat. Hand in your membership. <laughs> what heresy am I flying? I'm flying a hauler. And the hauler was a purposeful choice. Yes, Lizard King, they run them through the wash. But yes, no, this hauler is a very purposeful choice because I wanted to show that you could go out exploring without a big fancy ship. Um, nothing in this system, though. Oh, is it too soon for a wash joke? How many years has it been? And it's still too good. Uh, too, still too uh, soon. Yep, the hull is a good, fun little ship. I mean, theoretically, if I'd chosen the Adder, it would have cost me a little bit more and I would not be able to have bought the, uh, afforded the rebuy. But I would have been able to have fit a, either a SRV bay or a, uh, a or an auto field maintenance unit. Is it still too soon? Uh, yeah, it's only been 12 years and it's still too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But one of the things that's going to be interesting for making a bit more of a Firefly-esque series, in Elite at least, because that's what that's what Into the Black is supposed to be. Uh, but they're they're changing the way mining's working. They wanted to make it a bit more like the Wild Le Wild West prospecting. So that'll be interesting. Maybe that's another a future for the series of Into the Black or uh, for Mel. Basically, just do a bit of everything. It's not twelve years. How long has it been then? I have no idea. Doesn't look like we've got anything else in the system. Nope. You think any change to mining would be an improvement? Fair enough. Well, apparently, on one of the images that they showed, is uh, they have you, they see you actually detonating uh, an, an asteroid. So I'm curious as to how that's going to go. Wasn't Serenity 20, 20, uh, 2005? No idea. I couldn't tell. I'd have to Google it. I can't be bothered. At least not at the moment. Because I'm just jumping, jumping, jumping. Probably going to go from the 15 to 20 minutes for the moment and then take a break for a bit. Because I'm bloody knackered today, and I'm like I said, I'm going hiking tomorrow, so I need to get, I need to keep, I need to keep my energy up today.
Um, yeah, Blade. I I've watched a little. I've watched the first two episodes of Star Trek Discovery. Personally, I don't mind their new take on the Klingons, but a lot of I, a lot of people don't seem to like it, which is fair enough. I don't mind one way or the other. Oh, look at this. We've got some potential terraformable worlds here. Let's go and scan these. Eating wieners, uh, get, putting wieners in my mouth up a mountain again. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I don't even know if it's going to be sausages this time. My mate's making the food this time. But I do always enjoy going out to the mountains. We're constantly trying to up ourselves every time we go out. So we're trying to walk further, do heavier things. Eventually, we're going to start doing the hiking with some weight vests on. Plus, we're thinking about getting some uh, some NATO planks, which, for those of you unfamiliar with the term, they're basically skis that attach to Norwegian military boots. Because both me and him have a have uh, a pair of uh, Norwegian military boots, so we're actually thinking of doing hiking out in the snow once it's well, well doing some hiking after it snowed even. All right, you can't. Yeah, so you're you're wrong there, spaceman. That's that's fine. Glad you admit it though. Yeah, because uh, the wash thing was in two thousand five, so that was twelve years ago. It still surprises me because when people say, like, just think, in three years, if in three years, oh no, not NATO planks. Yeah, NATO planks. Yeah. Uh, in three years' time, when they say. 30 years ago, it'll be the 90s that they're talking about. I still think of 1970. Snow? Where do I live? I live in Norway. Hence the Norwegian military boots. Oh, look at this. We've got a signal source. What is it? Degraded emissions. Not that we're going to be able to get much from that. Maybe it's encoded emissions that we're after, so... Not, I'm not bothering with that. No point. Actually, did I even look at that? I've scanned it. I didn't look at it though. No, it's not terraformable. Ah, can't be bothered. I'm going. I'm not saying it's right. Uh, shut up. Enough of that noon of this and so many years already feeling old. Oh, right. <laughs> no, it just surprises me. Because I can, I can happily say. Well, not happily. Bike, but I'm, I, I was I was talking to my mate uh, about an old drinking story that I had. Uh, I was 18 at the time. Now I, I had to sit there and think about how many years ago it was. And I'm sitting there going, "Holy crap! That was 16 years ago." I feel old. Now, I don't suppose we're going to be getting, finding anything useful here. Nope, absolutely sweet FA. Oh, you feel old when you meet 15-year-olds born in 2002. Yeah. Well, my cousin was born in December 99. So he was basically a uh, couple of days short of being a millennial. And he's nearly 18 now. Y'all weapon snappers. Yep. <laughs> you wanted to crawl into a corner when uh, a 24 year old called you, sir. <laughs> Funny thing is, I still get ID'd for booze and stuff because I don't look my age. <laughs> Roger, oh, thank you very much for the, f uh, for the subscription. Thank you, very, uh, greatly appreciated. I'll tell you what makes me laugh, though, is I was at my brother's house for dinner, uh, meeting my nephews, uh, well, going to see my nephews, not meeting, I've met them before, but seeing my nephews uh, with me, both my brothers, and um, it was amusing because my brother hates me, he's only two years younger than me, yet he's already receding in hair, and I'm not, <laughs> uh, so I, I have no receding hair, um, I'm only just starting to go grey, 
I've got like the occasional grey hair here or there and that's it by the time my mother was my age she had a full head of grey hair So I'm very lucky, genetically speaking. But uh, my brother is so uh, so uh, so kind of aggravated by him re having a receding hairline. He's literally shaved all his hair off, and he's just growing a big beard instead. He's he's like going for a Kratos look right now. Oh, you're nearly 22, and when people you shave, you think you're 16. Yeah. No, it made me laugh because when I was back in England, I, uh, I don't know, it wasn't even that. Um, where was I? Oh, no, it was. I th oh, it was, yeah, yeah, it was. I was at the pub. Uh, I was at a bar in England. Hello there, Drax. How's it going? I've got a bone to pick with you. But anyway, I'll carry on with this story quickly. When I was visiting England, I was going to a bar with my younger brother. He's ten years younger than me. And... Um, Went into the pub, the pub, and I got ID'd and he didn't. And she and the the bar the bar lass goes, it's it's this um, this check twenty five. You have to look like you're twenty five. And I'm sitting there going, I'm thirty fucking four. <laughs> How young do I look? <laughs> Perigodov, thank you very much. Good to see. Uh, good to see you here. Welcome to the stream. Oh, you just replied to that comment, did you? <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry. You're not the only one. I think it's more amusing than anything else. It's just why is it that? Because we were talking about it earlier uh, uh, on the stream. Is why is it that everybody's making a zero to hero series? In uh, check twenty five. Yeah, that was it, me machine. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's check 25. You have to make sure that you, the, the pe people that you're serving look at least 25. And I'm 30 fucking full. <laughs> Apparently, I don't look it. You shaved it off as soon as it began receding. It's going, for, uh, it's going to desert you. <laughs> Fair enough. That's exactly what my brother's done. He's gone for a Kratos look now. Now he's got like a big bushy beard and no hair on top. And uh, Dave Moore, let's see. Uh, you got the opposite problem. Uh, grabbed something from Tesco a while back and they tent tapped you. Uh, customer is definitely over 25 button, definitely. <laughs> You're only 45 at the time. Oh. Now I'll tell you what, my uh, cousin's got the complete opposite problem, my brother. Uh, actually, no, he hasn't. He's got both problems. My cousin, actually, he is three years younger than me. And he's got really bad receding hairline. It's almost getting to the point where it's kind of meeting in the middle where he'd have, like, the little circle bit of hair at the front. I told him if he gets that, he's got to grow that bit long and gel it into a horn. <laughs> but, um, no, he cannot grow a beard at all. He's got, like, a little bit of like a wispy little goatee and that's it that's all that will grow <laughs> he's 31 and he goes it took you a while to grow your beard as well didn't it and I said yeah it took me until I was 21 <laughs> and drag, uh, drag. you say let's see uh, this is a great idea it's actually the second time you've done it oh is it okay I know somebody had done one previously but they've done it with the number two instead of some, instead of the two. Speaking of receding hair, did you get a picture with obsidian ants? Uh, there is one on Twitter of me with a obsidian ant, but I purposely didn't take one because he doesn't like being the focus of pictures and stuff. He's not exactly the most uh, confident of people face to face. So um, I didn't think it'd be fair to kind of push him into that one. And Tesco a bit ageist? Yeah, probably. And yeah, <laughs> Drax, yeah, you got that hairline. Uh, 
Commander Nordic Pagan, you're 50 and people believe that it, it believe when I say you're 49. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, you shave it short. Exactly what my brother does. Apart from my brother, like I say, he's got, he's got the overcompensator. So the big bushy beard. Right, what have we got in this system? Uh, I'm getting too busy, too distracted talking about stuff. Ooh, that looks interesting. Probably high metal content. With some water there, but I, yeah, I'm not bothered. Well, I've still got my Viking haircut. Occasionally, it looks a little bit like I'm I'm thinning, but I'm not actually. It's just uh, sometimes the hair gets a little greasier than I intended to with working out or something, and it clumps together, and you can just see through to the scalp. So I'll just go and wash it, and it looks thick as all hell after that. I mean, last date I was on, I got really complimented for my hair, so I was like. Sweet. That's awesome. Especially since I cut it myself. Ah, uh, I think we got a bit too close. Right, anything else? No, no. Yeah, <laughs> I am very lucky. Now, the weird thing is, genetically speaking, my... On my mother's side of the family, my grandfather, he had a full head of hair until the day he died. It may have thinned down a bit, but it was... Uh, ooh! I <laughs> consider this royalties. <laughs> Thank you very much there, uh, Rex, man. That is greatly appreciated. Now, I'm pretty sure that I was supposed to have a notification pop up on screen for those kind of comments, but it's not working. Eh, oh well. But yeah, greatly appreciated, dude. <laughs> you, are a, you, sir, are a legend. But yeah, no, my grandfather, like I said, he had a full head of hair until the day he died. Problem is, everybody in that side of the family went so uh, grey really early. But on my father's side of the family... There we go, now it pops up. <laughs> Again, thank you. But on my father's side of the family, uh, he lost his hair really early. But he maintained his hair colour uh, until, like, really late, and really late on. I don't think he's even started going grey yet or something, I don't think. Or if he has, I don't know, because he started shaving it. But basically, it seems that I got the hair thickness from my mother's side and the colour from my father's side. So I'm a lucky bastard with this. And it seems my brother got the complete opposite. <laughs> so he hates me right now. Well, he doesn't hate me, but uh, he really doesn't like the fact that I've got better hair than him now. Time for a four-hour drive home. <laughs> All right. Yep, I'll, have a, I'll do my, le my level best. Have a safe trip back to the ball. Thank you very much, uh, Lego Squidman. And where am I going? I'm going back to the bubble meme machine. We are heading to Alvira Martuk system, to the Cudden system. And uh, Limes92, you've got a friend who's always says grey hair would be nice since there are uh, since the, there are not that many left in his <laughs> on his <laughs> this is mid twenties, yeah. I'll tell you what, I feel really bad for this guy that I saw at um, the local grocery store uh, a year or so back. He's no longer working there. But what happened um, is he looked like he was in his like his mid to early twenties. Like he's he like his early to mid twenties, maybe his late twenties at worst. And uh, what uh, the thing is, he he don't he got like little bits of wispy hair left on his head. So instead of just shaving it off like any sane person would have done, he covered his head in paint. It looked like he covered his head in boot polish. It looked terrible. But anyway, let's move on. Drax, yeah, you love the content. You've watched your content since you started playing Elite. Well, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, I know, uh, I remember when your channel was smaller than mine and you've just massively overtaken me. I remember the first time I joined you on your stream and you got very surprised when you were playing Rocket League. That was funny. And... Uh, Potskeep, I think it is. Where, uh, when you were working front of house, you once ID'd someone who was 47. 
he'd shaved and looked about 20. You're 18 at the time. <laughs> Fair enough. And you've actually been losing your hair since you were 17. Oh, that sucks. And uh, Nordic Pagan uh, just sent a hatchback limpet into a threat to medical transport convoy. 28% hull left when you manage to wake out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's scoop this and see. Nah, nothing in this system. It's a dead system. It's an ugly system. It's a bug system. No, they don't like it when you do that kind of thing. Because I made the mistake of doing that at one point and I lost my uh, ship. Because I was completed. I didn't, I didn't lose my ship. I nearly did. I got very low on hull and nearly died. What did I? I can't remember. I, I cannot remember what I was doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was think I was in my python or something or maybe i was in my vulture i can't remember i've, si I've since sold my vulture so i don't remember off the top of my head but i was i was trying to find materials for grade five um long range uh extended range something uh, frame shift drives that's the word so do i think <coughs> excuse me So do I think the CG is worth the trip? Uh, I'm not going to bother with it. <laughs> I was all ready to do some CGs this time, but I can't be bothered. So I'm not going to worry with it. Uh, do, do. Anyway. And... Uh, <clears throat> Pixel says, you refuse to let your hair loss prevent you from uh, having long flowing locks. Good on you, sir. But if I remember rightly, when we were having, when we, when we were eating that Nando's, you did say this is the last time you're planning to grow it. Or am I just um, imagining that? And yes, let's not forget our lovely Sir Super Death, our moderator here. He's got long hair as well. It's the Long Hair Club. <laughs> and uh, you find you find it limpet at an asteroid base down Marope. Way it didn't attach, but the station <laughs> the station didn't like it. <laughs> and Firefly says, "No, not the Varg. I'm planning to get it back again, but uh, it's going to help me in the end as well because um, buying it back because somebody wanted to see a non-engineered build for the Vulture. So this will help me doing that as well, I suppose. But I sold the Varg because I wanted it to be able to buy uh, my new ship, the Valkyrie." Which, I've got to say, my Valkyrie build ship, uh, build video, the uh, Anaconda combat build, it's already become like one of the most controversial videos on my channel. People are arguing left and right as to whether it's a good or a bad build. But what people fail to realise is I actually um, fly a lot on a wing, so obviously I'm going to be going for nothing but Healy Beams most of the time. And yes, you're quite right there, uh, Brawny Fanta. Long hair for the win. And Firefly says, that thing, uh, sorry, that thing was the most overpowered vulture you've ever seen. It was. I'm going to see if I can get it to that again. The, the main issue was, is I kind of accidentally sold the prismatic shield that was on there. So I need to join uh, Ashling, uh, Ashling Duvel again. Ashling, yeah, Ashling Duvel. The prismatic princess or the blue Khaleesi. I've got to join her again and get those back again. And you're not a man, you're a boy. All right, fair enough. You miss your long hair. You cut it off 45 centimetres when you started to lose it. All right, fair enough. Um, the longest I ever had my hair was down to my lower back. Uh, don't remember, I don't know how long that was, but it was bloody long. But I cut it shorter more recently, but that was after I stopped. That's after I stopped dyeing it as well, because I was going through like a full black metal phase where I was dyeing my hair black and everything, and I'm completely over that now. When is the Wolfpack logo CG due? That is on the 9th of November, so that's 9th of next month. You're starting to engineer a Python. You finally got 
Holy grind, Batman. Yeah, the engineering can be a bit of a grind, but once you've unlocked all the engineers, it's a cakewalk after that. I mean, I've got every single engineer unlocked in my main account. About half of them on Ducky now. Uh, this is the only account where I haven't got a single engineer unlocked. The poor, Ra and the poor Ragnarok sticking its hanger, <laughs> getting envious of the Valkyrie. <laughs> the Ragnarok still gets flown. Uh, I use the Ragnarok whenever I am around Jonai or in Jonai space. The Valkyrie usually gets used when I'm outside of Jonai space. Because right now we actually just expanded into our 25th system. We're now at war as well to for control of like our 22nd system or something. Not sure. Vultures always need a grade 2 power plant overcharge. Yeah, minimum there, Nordic. Very very minimum. The one I had at a grade 5, and that was only just enough. Yeah, I do plan to do some videos on how to hunt the raw materials. The thing is, they're not that difficult to get. A lot of them. And Mucker, you've also got a really long hair, and every girl you know is jealous of it. Yeah. <laughs> You're a guy. All right. I remember at my, uh, f f when I was at my grandfather's funeral, I was one of the uh, the bearers for the for the coffin, taking it down the down to the front. And I got all my hair out, and apparently people were more interested in my hair than they were with the procession, which was huh, okay. At least those were the comments I got after. And uh, can I say bottle? Alright. What's up, Bobby? How's life? Life is pretty good, man. As you. <laughs> Your wife's going away to work next weekend. It's... Uh... Yeah, it's definitely going to be an engineer unlock weekend, Mortimer. Which engineer have you got in mind? And yes, we have finally taken control of Inara. We are now the largest wing on the Inara page, which is awesome. And the funny thing is, as soon as we became the largest, uh, as soon as we overtook... Um, the, oh, what the hell were they called again? My brain's gone blank for a sec. I'll find it quick. Uh, where am I? The other wings. Oh, my brain. What's it called? Where are they? The Ghost Legion, because the Ghost Legion were the largest originally. But what gets me is the second that we became the largest, Ghost Legion dissolved. They lost half their uh, members overnight. It was ridiculous. Are you trying to get as many as possible? Awesome. Kind of ignored them uh, to this point, but just got into an ASP. Mainly drive range is priority one. Yeah. Well, easiest ones you can do because both the, both the frame shift drive engineers are grade one engineers or level one engineers. So that's either Alvira Martuk or it's going to be Felicity Farsi, and they're both level one engineers. And yeah, uh, Sif is so hard to get at the moment. Cracked industrial firmware. All right, okay. So many scans, never any cracked industrial firmware data mined. It's a lot easier than that. All right. Well, one of the things I use, I'm pr pretty sure I've probably put this into chat before, but for those who haven't seen it, this is the page that I use. It's put, it was put together by uh, our own... So super death and what that is is it's a list of bases you can go to and scan planetary outposts without having without even setting off the 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 base security i've tested it recently in this patch and it does still work so yeah that's a good way of giving it a go and let's see you just joined the other day flukes of hazard here oh welcome to the stream flukes uh, Firefly. Yeah, now they really are ghosts. <laughs> oh, Ghost Legion got rid of inactive members. Oh, so that's how they were so high up on there. They were cheating. It was all cloned accounts, was it? 
And they drive tune to level three. Oh yeah, yeah. Only one of them does that. Felicity Farseer. No, yeah. Farseer does drive tunes to grade three. She also does power plants to grade one. So Farseer is the better out of the two if you only want to unlock a single engineer. And Drax, she took you down back, Explorer. Uh, 36 to 59, and but only rolled three times. All right. Yeah, it's totally worth it. I mean, one of the more controversial points on my explore, uh, my Anaconda Explorer build was the fact that I got a god roll on my frameshift drive uh, roll. Because usually the maximum you can get is 50% optimised mass. Or optimal, optimise, optimised mass, optimal whole mass, whatever it's called. I can't remember the name for it, but this is the the, the, the main one that's used. Actually, you know what? I can just check it, can't I? Right, Felicity Farce here. Let's see. Uh, she'll be able to do, to do the frame shift drive, increased range. What's it called? Optimized mass. Yeah, the op on the grade five, the optimized mass can go from between twenty and fifty percent, not including secondary rolls. But on the secondary roll, I got a gold roll and ended up with fifty-five point nine percent optimized mass that was in that was awesome and you're quite welcome nordic it's a great thing that i use uh what you want to do is work out which ones are far enough uh, just check each of them because uh they are a good distance apart best thing to do is make sure that you've got a ship with a decent jump range to begin with so at least 30 odd light years if you can manage that and the fourth horseman, yes, but you have to have the Horizons expansion. Oh, where was that one? Oh, the fourth one. Is planetary landings possible in this game? Yes, it is, but you do need the airplane. As Mike, uh, Mike says, you do need the Horizons expansion. Which is great, especially since with the Horizons expansion, you don't just get all the engineers, the exp the, all, the, all the stuff that comes with Horizons. But you're also getting the beyond season of uh, expansions next year. So all the Alliance ships and everything. Which has got to be said, they look very Star Citizen. But I'm curious, Drax. What is your view on the um, the Alliance ships? Because I've been, I've been, I'm putting myself on record saying that it looks like Frontier's going, Oh yeah, look guys, we can do Star Citizen better than Star Citizen can. Well, maybe not bet, but we can do Sartreton too. You're at Shinrata, and the distance is no object, because if you can get uh, Crack and Stratheria, fair enough. You had uh, a roll like that on your power plant. Now it has like 61 megawatts. Holy crap, is that an 8A or something? You could run a second ship off of it. Holy crud. That must be an 8A. The thing is, even Ducky got a, got a god roll. Well, a god-ish roll. She got like 53%, uh, 54% or something on a frameshift drive. The only thing is, it was only a grade 4. So, it works well for a Dimeback Explorer, but not for much else. Actually, no, Dimeback Explorer's a grade 5, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, Cobras, maybe... Uh, dolphins, Type 6s. Type 6 would work with it. Uh, what else has been shown besides the Chieftain? Nothing really, just the Chieftain. But to me, the Chieftain looks like a very Star Citizen-esque design. So, in my eyes, it's pretty much Frontier trying to entice the Star Citizen players away from... Well, so, oh yeah, there's the crate as well, but that's not the, that's not the Alliance ships. That's just a standard ship anyway, but I like the look of the crate. I'm definitely going to get one. At least for a short while. The type There's the Type 10 Defender, which is like the uh, the Type 9 on steroids. And that's about it so far. Yeah, the crate's just a standard ship. It's about, the si it's about in between the size of a Viper and a Cobra by the look of it. And according to Frontier and EDRPG, it's a different type. It's a different model of crate than the one that is in the EDRPG. The one in EDRPG is a really old version, so this may be like a crate 2.0 or a crate something else. It's not the crate lightspeeder, it's a crate something else. 
Paint the pink, paint the crate pink with fluffy seats. No, leave the fluffy seats out of it. They've they already paint, they already put fluffy bloody seats in my Cobra in the RPG, and my old crate had pink fluffy unicorns painted over it. Thanks to Bam the bastard. <laughs> he is really an asshole. But again, the uh, the pink fluffy seats that was Rody. It looks like an Avenger, I suppose. It looks like uh, something like one of the dropships from Halo, and it also looks like one of the dropships from Alien, funnily enough. Wow, we're really coming through some really crappy stars. Excuse me, we're some really crappy star systems right now. Right, hopefully, let's have a look. Yeah, next one's scoopable, we're good. So let's see. But yeah, I really do like the look of the Chieftain, but as I said, it looks like it's a Star Citizen-esque ship. But I don't think having ships that look like they're going that way is going to be a bad thing, because I don't think Star Citizen is going to be a thing until at least, at least three to five years, because it's just not making any headway at all from what I can tell. It has a very Ridley Scott feel, does it? It does, actually, as well. It does look a little bit like the Prometheus, as well, come to think of it. Oh, this one isn't uh, what's it, scoopable. Hmm. All right, well, I better have a scoopable star coming up sometime soon. Let's have a look. This one is... M-Class Red Dwarf. Yeah, that's scoopable. That's good. Let's be honest, Star Citizen is a tech demo right now. Yeah, I've said this for a long time, Drax. Uh, many people I have talked to are getting antsy. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The thing is, they were supposed to be bringing... They were supposed to be having Squadron 42 at uh, Gamescom or whatever is going... The, the event that's either going on now or that was going on not that long ago. They were supposed to be there and they ended up just not, not turning up. Just not being there. They, like, cancelled, like, last minute or something. Which basically just means that they're trying to maintain hype even though they've got nothing. And don't forget all the allega allegations that were happening years ago about um, them skimming money off their uh, fund. I mean, I don't know if it's true or not. I hope it's not. I do. I really do hope that in the end of the day, Star Citizen is actually going to succeed because from, uh, Elite Dangerous does need competition. The problem is I just can't see it happening this time, uh, this time before 2020. Uh, Any time before 2020. Yeah, don't worry, uh, Alison Pelt. We're perfectly fine. We've managed to scoop. We are good. And I just realised that I said I was going to only stream for like another 15, 20 minutes, and that was like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's just keep going until my voice starts giving out. You used to get the alien dropship feel whenever you looked at the ASP for the first time. Fair enough. Hello, hello, Echo. How's it going? More unscoopable stars. That's, I'm, I'm rather curious now. Wow. We've done... A, we started on 220. So that's 72 jumps-ish that we've done. Not in, actually, no, it's about a little bit less than that. Three less. So, 69 jumps, maybe? You only brought the Mustang Alpha. So, if it doesn't go anywhere, you're not out much. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, I've got the Aurora. So, I've got the base package. So, I do have access to Star Citizen. I have bought into it. But I bought in the, the smallest I could possibly do. Because I don't like the idea... I, I, one of the things that really put me off Star Citizen is the way they have been marketing it with like, oh, you can buy this picture of a ship with a vague hope of potentially owning it one day if we get around to it. And to me, that's just wrong. I much prefer Frontier's way of developing their game. Which is, get the bare bones first and then develop up on that. But then again, you've got enough haters for that as well and enough people that complain about it. So you're never going to please anybody. You're, you're never going to please everybody. 
Am I glad I know this? Because uh, if I didn't know this, I'd be crying with the amount, of, the amount of people that complain about my ship builds, telling me that they're crap, and that in PvP that I would die in horribly. <laughs> well, they don't realise is I don't give a toss about PvP. Never have, never will. So what do I think about their 850 concept sale? Ha! They can go and shove it. I think they're cheeky bastards, really. The thing is, they're never going to get... It's it's false advertising now, I think. They're putting these up here, and they're never going to have the development time to put these things out. If they can't develop the main game, they're never going to have the development time to build all these ships, because unless they microtransaction the shit out of this game... Because, let's be honest, they've got about as many people that have already backed it and bought into it as, as ever are going to play it. So they're never going to uh, be able to have a successful game unless they make it either uh, pay to play, like a subscription basis, or they microtransaction the shit out of it. Because it's going to be very hard to attract new players. Because there are about as many people that have bought into Star Citizen as actually play Elite Dangerous. And they have like eight studios working on it. Yeah, right. It's never going to happen. It's, it's ridiculous. But the thing is that, like I said, they they still need to have all this development time to do all things. Look at Elite. Look at Frontier. They're working on so much. They've got a big development team working on Elite mode a lot. But then again, it's nowhere near as many people as what are working on Star Citizen. Star Citizen has more money, more staff. And Elite has pulled more out of their ass than Star Citizen has in a long time. Now, it, I am somewhat shitting on Star Citizen, I suppose, but I really do want it to succeed. Because I do want Elite to have competition. Because it'll push Elite to be better and Elite will push Star Citizen to be better. And they'll both be better games for it. But I just don't see this happening anytime soon. But at the end of the day... At the end of the day, the two, you the two games are not mutually exclusive. You can't just own one or the other. My computer, my computer hard drive is big enough to house the both of them. And I have more than enough time in the day to play both if I wanted. But I'm just not giving, a, uh, giving uh, Star Citizen the time of day until they actually prove to me that they can get shit done. What Star Citizen? Exactly. It's a tech demo right now and that's about it. But if you say, uh, what I love is the fact that if you say even anything ever so remotely negative on their forums, you get chewed up, spit out, and shat over faster than you can say. But it's only a tech demo. I don't say that because they will really have a go at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're quite right, pal. Uh, buy into it when and if it releases. It's probably a good thing. The only reason I bought into it the minimal amount possible is because if there's something interesting in it, I can cover it if I so want to. You don't know why you ever stopped playing Elite? You always enjoy the game so much? Uh, it's a great game. I mean, I got burnt out on it a little bit, but that's more because I was making videos every day and it started to feel like a job. I don't know how you do it so often, so much, dude. I remember back when you were doing your uh, planet-based videos. And then uh, when I was doing my... Because I finished my planet-based series now. Although, I kind of screwed up the recording on the last episode, so that was a bit interesting. So, the last episode never actually aired, because I completely screwed up the recording of it. But I cur curb-stomped the last planet as well. It was this, oh yeah, it was the new stormy planet. That was the one, the one with the lightning rods and everything. The thing is, that was supposed to be like an extremely difficult planet. It turned out to be rather easy. It didn't have asteroids or anything. It literally just had... Actually, did it? No, I'm pretty sure it didn't have any asteroids. It just had lightning. And as long as you were careful with where you were building things, you were perfectly fine. You don't want Elite to try and be Star Citizen and then lose itself in that? No, it's not going to be Star Citizen. Uh, what's going to happen is they're just going to do things differently and do things their way. Because I don't think... I don't think David Graham is ever going to uh, try and just become Star Citizen. Did I ever finish the XCOM 2? No, it's still going. Still going. I'm actually planning to stream some XCOM 2 tomorrow. 
uh, because I've still got the Twitch, uh, the Twitch playthrough which I was doing on Twitch, which I'm going to start doing on YouTube again now. So I'll do that tomorrow. And I've still got the YouTube, uh, the video playthrough to go as well, which I need to make a video on as well. But like I said, got burnt out. I'm trying not to kind of make the same mistake and just do too much too soon. And we do. And what's this? Uh, saying we do. We do need frontier development to improve multi-crew with third person. Then Star Citizen will have a hard time. Eh, well, I suppose. I don't like the start of the third person all that much. I like the first person view of Elite. I think it's much better. Alrighty, Drax. Been a pleasure having you around, matey. Safe travels to yourself. Well, that's reminded me actually thinking of uh, Zero to Hero as well. I am actually as soon as as soon as the Beyond series starts, uh, up, the Beyond series of updates starts. I am planning to uh, restart Ducky again because I do this every time we have major update. By that point, she should quite easily be in an Anaconda. Well, she can afford an Anaconda now. It's just I can't afford to upgrade it that much. Are there old fart gaming? How's it going? First time you've caught me live, and you just wanted to say thanks for the vids, the uh, videos even. Uh, as a new ED player, only 200 hours in. <laughs> yeah, only. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have helped. So who's in for an SRV race tonight? It really depends where it is. We really need to get Geddy back, uh, Commander Geddy back to do his uh, events again. I remember the uh, the uh, ED triathlon we did, was that was hilarious. Until somebody fell down a hole and got stuck and got very, very salty about it. <laughs> Still funny, though. They were just upset because they were winning until they drove into a hole because they weren't looking where they were going. Hello, Clockwork Gears. How's it going? Right, what have we got on system? Nothing. Did I scan? Don't think I did. Did I? Yeah, must have done. I don't know what it is, but I always forget whether I've scanned or not. Super, play nice. One of the one of the minor problems when Ra well, one of the problems when Ra was doing events is he always overreached a little bit, and the events never managed to live up to what we were after. It's best to just do small little events. Those are the best things to have. And that's what Getty specialised at, was small little events. Basically, he just wrote up the, uh, the little PvP kind of muck about um, championship kind of thing, like the, the league table kind of thing. That was fun. Oh, your CPU died a week ago. New one should arrive today. SRV race sounds fun. Be like 20 tumbleweeds in a race. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're quite right. I've got an idea. Why don't uh, Why don't we do um, an SRV race on Akinar Three? <laughs> well, that'll be interesting. There we go. What have we got in this system? Ooh, that's, that's not a that's a high metal content. It just looked a bit more like an Earthlight from further out, but it might be terraformable. So let's go and have a look. We already found one Earthlight today. You're sitting on five weeks playtime. You started in February. Honestly, feels like longer. <laughs> What time? No idea. Um, I'll have to get a ship down there. Right, question. What is the playtime I've got on this account? I have no idea. Let's have a look. Down to exploration. Here we go. One day. 
12 hours 51 minutes. That's how much we've got on this character. Ducky's got at least five weeks, I believe. Five to eight weeks. Now, my main account, I've got like 21 weeks or something. And... Uh, pots. Uh, pots. Skip. No idea how to say that. I'm hoping I'm saying it right. Your first impressions were uh, you brought into us on broadly in line with what Yamix showed. I haven't. I don't actually watch Yamix videos, so I couldn't tell. I have no idea what that is. I exist in my own little elite dangerous bubble. I kind of very rarely watch other YouTubers' videos on the game. There we go. Just went back to the game. Uh, you gave up and went back to a game that's actually a game. Yeah, makes sense. Akinar 3 and you have to land a Type 9 with degrade thrusters. Not again. I'm not doing that again, Eco. <laughs> Echo, even. We did that with a Type 9 full of beer. I'm not doing that again. That was that. That was We ended up with making a crater. A beer crater. Do SRV race on the planets I am on? Uh, 0 0.06 G's. You can do the start finish line. <laughs> Old Peculiar, love the video. You love the videos. Thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. I'm happy that you like them. I'm happy that they're actually proving to be useful. And Yamix is. Yeah? Okay, I don't know. Never watched his videos, so I couldn't tell you. Unless I don't think I have. And how dare I not watch Yamik? I don't watch anybody. The only ones I watch are occasionally of Sitting Ant and Drax whenever he does his videos, but that's... I feel obliged to watch Drax a bit more because he used to be a Wolfpack member. Or probably still is, potentially. I don't know. But he was one of the, pa one of the pack before we went off and started his own channel and grew bigger than me. That bastard. <laughs> I don't even know what kind of videos he makes. But if I remember rightly, somebody said that he makes... Or it might be him or somebody else. You demand that I watch a bit of Yamek? Eh, maybe. We'll see. From what I understand, apparently he does... Uh, oh, you see, oh, yeah. I watch yours as well, Pixel. Obviously I watch yours. No, by now, because we were talking about it before. But you should, you should know I'm crap, because I can never remember anything. And I forget to mention you. Yamix is a pretty uh, pragmatic, but uh, pragmatic is very pragma pragmatic but cynical. A real pessimist. All right, fair enough. Maybe I did see some of his videos. I really don't like it when people are misery. Um, uh, I hope he's not a misery, but misery guts because that's one of the things I really hate in videos. Pixel has a channel. He does indeed. He made one of the best best tutorials I've ever seen in the game. Admittedly, though, it did, uh, as he says, it took a lot of work, and uh, he hasn't bothered making another one since. But, uh, all right, Jeff. See. Uh, all right. Uh, hello, okay. Catch you live. All right. Sorry, I thought you were about to say catch you later. I thought you were going, so <laughs> that's what I was angling that as. Anyway, let's jump out of this system. I have no idea why I was scanning these particular planets. Actually, let's not jump out yet and find out why I was scanning them. Oh, that'd be right. Nope, not terraformal. Not terraformal. Not terraformal. And it's a rocky ice. Why did I scan two rocky ice worlds? Ah, well. You live streamed your first run towards the Thargoids, didn't. Doc got killed, and you up 21 jumps away back where he started. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. No, you just got it. Yeah, I realised that after I actually read properly your, <laughs> your comment. I don't do that. I just kind of sk I skim and end up realising that I've screwed up reading stuff. Uh, 
But then again, I am dyslexic as well, so I do struggle reading things. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So seven things in this system. There's not going to be anything terraformable or even Earth-like or even habitable because this is a brown dwarf. It's going to be a Y class, isn't it? I mean, L class even. So yeah, no, uh, yeah, that will be an L class because a Y class is actually brown slash purple. And yes, it did. Uh, yeah, you did say ducks or cages. I remember we were talking about it over the Nando's. Almost as long as uh, waiting around to find players to make a piracy video. Yeah, I remember that struggle. My, I, I spent about that that piracy tutorial took me a week to make. And the only reason it took me a week is because trying to find people in open to pirate. And people were complaining that I didn't put enough uh, PvP piracy in the video. That was literally all I could find. I was hanging around in starter systems. I was hanging around in CG systems. Nobody was there. And what we're jumping into? We're jumping into an M class. So yeah, this should be scoopable. But yeah, no, I loved that uh, that video because you uh, really did the the whole uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy theme, and I really loved that. Oh, am I, am I mistaken? I'm not dyslexing. The letters are not jumping up. The words are you are reading are in Norwegian. That's the problem. No, no, that's the thing. I struggle reading English. Never mind Norwegian. I literally cannot read Norwegian that much. I can speak Norwegian. I just cannot read it. So that's why I hate getting paper letters in not in uh, in Norway because I can't use Google Translate on them. <laughs> and Lee Mason, you're quite welcome for the videos. It, I, I I do enjoy making them, and one of the main reasons I made them in the first place was oh there are no tutorials. Bugger it! I'll make me bloody own. So that's what happened. Yes, if I fly, you're quite right. I did pirate some poor little bugger in a in a, in a sidewinder. He had one ton of fairly expensive cargo, and I felt really guilty and spent the next half hour trying to give it back to him. I was there. I saw him trying to dock at a station. You could tell he'd not been playing the game for very long, because he couldn't even dock at an outpost. What had happened is he was putting in his heart, he was pulling his hard points in and out rather than his landing gear, trying to land. So I felt bad, dumped the cargo in front of him, and started using the, the nose of my cobra to try and nudge it over to him like a little puppy, going, "Yeah, take it, take it back, throw the ball," kind of thing. He didn't grab, he didn't grasp the concept, so I got annoyed after about twenty minutes, half an hour. So I thought, "Sod it, you know what? I'll scoop it up and flew off." Dust to dust, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated to hear that people love the uh, like the channel. But what I would suggest as well is uh, go and check out Outlandish Pixel's channel. He does do some really good work. It's just when he decided to start doing Elite Dangerous content, the market was already fairly well saturated. Uh, I got lucky because I came in when um, when the game was fresh. I came in in Gamma, or Beta even. So there was almost nobody doing the stuff then. If I tried to come in now, nobody would pay me any mind. So I'm the other reason I'm as I'm as uh, popular as I am is because I started off early. It's nothing to do with all the effort I put into my videos. <coughs> what effort? <coughs> <laughs> I've got to say though, one of the one of the things, that, one of the unique things about my channel is I don't script anything. Actually, I do. That's a lie. I script my uh, my. Um, ultimate tutorial videos and that's about it mm, thought I was talking to you yeah you did that too in a vid yeah you did that as well yeah no no somebody else was saying it uh, who was it? it was Firefly that was saying it yeah yeah uh, where are we now so you've been playing since PS4 launch and you still struggle to land outposts. You can never find the pad that's been allocated. Yeah. No, I just point myself towards it. And I can pretty much work out which side it'll be on because I'm so used to seeing these things. So used to seeing the outposts now. Because there's only so many different types of outposts. 
No, I, I do speak as well and all, I suppose. But then again, several years of being a, being a call centre operative does help. Did help with that because I used to work at a call centre down in London, and it did. It, I suppose it also helped having that psycho ex girlfriend that insisted I stop speaking my northern accent or midland accent, as it may be, and start talking Queen's English. So yeah, there was that. There was that. There's all those weird psycho parts of my uh, my my old life that have accumulated together to come towards and make me what I am today. The wannabe YouTube superstar that can't quite get every can't quite get as many subs as you'd like. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy with what I've got at the moment, but I would like to get at least a bit bigger than Obsidian Ant. I'm not competitive at all. No, not at all. Only in the ways that really are kind of a bit more unhealthy than usual. You're quite welcome, Pixel. Don't worry about it. You do do. I've given you plugs before, but you do make good content. It's just you. You're so busy. You make it so infrequently. Is the problem, I suppose. All right. What else we got in here? Just two stars. How far away is the other one? Too far away for me to bother with. Do you not speak the Queen's English, man? Nah, man. Nah, let it. I don't speak the Queen's English no more. Oh, no, we're getting too warm. Our Obsidian's broke 100,000 subscribers. Oh, very nice for him. Awesome. Yeah, I'm only like about three and a half times off that. <laughs> but oh well. I remember when he was smaller than me. Oh, the bastard. And I'm not talking about anatomically. He's still he's still smaller than me physically. <laughs> he's a great guy though. Has anyone really been far? Uh, has anyone really been far even as dedicated to uh, to use even go want to look more like? Wait, what? Two knots. I'm pretty sure that, that sentence is not actually a sentence. I'm sorry, I, I, either I'm not reading that right, or that makes that is just complete and utter gibberish. Any tips for those who want to become YouTubers? Be yourself. Really, don't try and be anybody else. People will tell that you're being fake. Just use your own personality and just uh, cultivate that, really. Do what you're comfortable in, find out what your strengths are. I mean, I do tutorials and I do uh, ship reviews. One of the reasons why I've been slowing down a bit recently is because there's not there's been very few new ships come out. Well, none for the past bloody uh, god knows how long. And there's been very little that I want to make tutorials on recently. I need to start making some more tutorials. I just can't think off the top of my head what I need to do. I can't think of what things I haven't already covered. So I really need to get a list of things that I need to make, I could do in making tutorials on. Plus, I could probably redo with remaking a few, but I'm getting lazy in doing that. Oh, you did you, you live stream last week and it happened then? Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't think you live streamed from EG, not EGX, from, not EGX, uh, the Frontier Expo. You didn't stream there, I don't believe. Yeah, we need to start doing podcasts. You're quite right, Super. We do. We've been talking about it for ages, but it's you know me, lazy, not wanting to, not wanting to to actually spend effort on it. So yeah, we need to sort that out. I already have, uh, I already have voice attack, um, uh, old fart gaming. I've already got that one. I had it for a season of Zero to Hero, but. I had to reinstall my computer due to a virus and I never bothered reinstalling it. Because to me it was just felt felt like more bells and whistles that I didn't need. Oh yeah, he live streamed it from home. Yeah. No no, he'll live stream from home. I just don't think he uh, he's just not comfortable around like lots of people and stuff at events and so on. Because remember there he spent a lot of his time in the green room. Which is fine. I mean, not everybody can be as outgoing, as confident as, like, 
other other YouTubers like me. I mean, he's bigger than me, so he's obviously doing something right. How about the one hour challenge? Oh yeah, there's that, isn't there? Like start a new account and see how far you can get with the one hour thing. You know what I'd do? I'd just make use of my Wolfpack members. I'd go and get a ship with uh, collect Olympic controllers and go and get them to mine up a metric shit ton of painite. <laughs> just stand outside the station. I'd just fly in and out and grab it all. <laughs> Because I've got a wolf pack, why not use it? Let's see. Oh, it's a smooth, smooth voice, is it? Right, okay. <laughs> uh, not everyone has the time to slave away eight hours per day just to make eight million. And so uh, you make 30 to 50 mil in three. All right, fair enough. Two knots, go do some missions from Jonai with the walls of Jonai. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, the will. Yeah, that'll work. that works. Summon the minions. Yes. <laughs> Tell you what, that was another great thing about uh, the Frontier Expo. Actually meeting you guys there. I mean, I felt a little bit guilty when I met uh, Commander Hippie Bass because for the last two years we've been calling him Commander Hippie Bass <laughs> because Bass and Bass are spelt the same. And uh, he was apparently a bit annoyed with me because uh, I've been calling him Hippie Bass for two years and he was too polite to correct me. But the thing is, you need to do this because I won't learn otherwise. And... Uh, Gregory, what are you saying? Hey, okay, girls, just wanted to say thanks for the effort and time you put into videos. You're awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a good thing other people are noticing as well. <laughs> yes, I am awesome, aren't I? <laughs> I'm not pulling myself in the slightest. <laughs> Mr. Oodle, thanks for the content, especially like your ship and engineer reviews. What are you especially looking forward to in the upcoming Beyond series? Um, well, the main thing I'm really looking forward to is Squadrons, but that's not coming out until the end of this, until like the last update, the last, till quarter four. I'm really looking forward to actually making the Wolves of Jonai a proper in-game thing, rather than just being a... Because at the moment, they're literally just a minor faction that we're manipulating. I want to have a really good... Um, control over it and have it as a proper guild. That is going to be an awesome thing. And happy birthday to Chaos Wolf. It's not my birthday. <laughs> Hasn't been my birthday for five months. <laughs> but thank you. Now, my birthday's in the end of May. Or is, unless it's the channel, I have no idea what I have no idea when I made the channel. <laughs> thank, thank you, Derek. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, I'm hoping. As, just, as Firefly says, I'm also hoping that uh, Squadrons will be the new Power Play. I'm hoping that Power Play pretty much gets dissolved and basically made into Squadrons, and maybe you can have people that you align with with your Squadrons or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you know, except, you know, good. But at the very least, one of the things I'm really, really looking forward to as well is not just being able to form a squadron and having the Wolves of Jonai be an actual thing. I'm really hoping that we can make the Wolves of Jonai into a proper squadron. We can say, right, this is our private group. Can we now make this into a, our squadron? And have it uh, 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 basically working with said minor faction. Because if we have to go through it all over again, that's going to be a real pain in the ass. Because we've been putting a lot of that time and effort pushing our minor faction. I mean, we're in 25 systems now. Soon to go into 26. Wait, what the hell? Really? 
Really? Oh, wait. No, that's not it. Uh, that's not it. How the hell? Why the hell are we so far away? Oh, wait. What? Oh, okay. What the hell's going on here? All right, fair enough. And how did you get your own custom decal? Um, we got it from... It was introduced during the Rise to Power event. Basically the event that got the first player faction in. That ended up being the... Oh, what's, it, what's his bloody name now? I forgot. My brain's just going blank on it. Yeah, you did it on, that guy. That was the EG Pilots. That's the very first player power in the game. We were competing for this, so everybody that took part in that event got their own uh, decal for their faction, and we got the, the Wolfpack one. But the great thing is, is those people that didn't get access to it during that event, we've now got a community goal that's happening next month on the 9th. So 9th of November, we've got a community goal for the Wolfpack, for the Wolves of Joni, which will allow you to get access, well, basically allow you to unlock this decal for yourself. You can just hand in a single ton and get it, although I would appreciate it if you did a little more than just a single ton, because we're trying to build a new station. And as Super Death says, make sure you join in our wing, because all the information for anything we're doing in the wing is going to be there. So anything to do with the wolves is going to be in the Inara wing. We are now the largest wing in Inara. So we're now the largest recorded player group in the game. Although technically, I suppose, Mobius is still still bigger, but they don't have a wing that's bigger. So, ha! Can the wolf pack be joined? Only on Facebook and Inara, really. So Super's just put the Inara link in here. And no super, not just two tons, you ass. Wouldn't it be great with the wolves to uh, to have a Chaos Wolves voice in the station like it was in the anti? Yeah, it would be nice. But uh, Frontier's never offered this to me. Obviously, I'm just not important enough. But I swear I flew into a station. I swear I heard Scott Manley's voice. So I got aggravated at that. Because Scott Manley's like my own personal Voldemort. He who must not be named. Mainly because it's a bit joke that's gone a bit too far, really. Because uh, I remember at one point I was talking about being the second largest Elite Dangerous YouTuber, which I am. And somebody says, no, you're not the second one. You must be the third because Scott Manley's the largest. And he's not an Elite Dangerous YouTuber. He's just a science guy that occasionally makes the odd video. But I still got salty as well, considering that uh, Frontier flew him out. They paid for his flights and everything. They won't do that for me. Oh, no. I'm only the biggest name in bloody uh, Elite Dangerous ship reviews. <laughs> oh well. It's a good thing I don't take myself too seriously, isn't it? No, Freya, I don't actually dislike him. It's just uh, a joke that's gone a bit too far. Oh, it's like Scott Manley got into it. Awesome. Now, I tried watching a few of his Kerbal tutorials, but they're so out of date now because he's not bothered with Kerbal properly for the longest of times. That's it. Atlant that's it, Pixel. You're off the Christmas card list. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Priya, it's just because somebody said that he's the best. He, he, that's uh, Scott Manley was the largest Elite Dangerous YouTuber, and he's not. He's just a guy that makes the occasional video on the game, and it just frustrated me a little bit. I don't dislike him as a person. And in fact, I was arguing with him a little bit. Well, not arguing. He was he was arguing at me uh, in one of his videos from the uh, the Frontier Expo. 
because I was standing around the uh, the EDRPG stand, and he was going, um, "Oh, does it use twelve sided dice?" And I'm like, "No, it's ten sided." And then he starts going off on a rant, saying that it should have been twelve sided. So what are you saying, me machine? <laughs> But yeah, uh, how did you get your very first ever 1 million credits? You got mine from smuggling. I got mine through mining, actually. Bearing in mind, mining back when I was mining at that point was 42-sided. Yeah, right. Scott is a meta ED YouTuber. I can't call him an ED YouTuber. He makes like about one video every like six months on the game. So he's just a YouTuber that happens to make an occasionally dangerous video. But yeah. So you guess him seen as the largest? Yeah, he is. He's the largest dedicated Elite Dangerous YouTuber. And what I'm talking about is dedicated Elite Dangerous YouTubers. Well, if you're talking about height, then yeah, I'm definitely the biggest. <laughs> At least between me and Obsidian. <laughs> I should stop going on about that. But yeah, anyway, uh, me machine, as you were saying, um, I made my first million through mining. And at that point, I was mining in a hauler with a small mining uh, laser, a class two, well, a class two or a class one refinery and I had to scoop everything manually because collector limpets were not a thing back then. And did I make customising weapon tutorials? Not quite. No, I didn't. Because I still don't understand most of it completely. I've done a uh, tutorial on engineers but nothing in specific for each of the individual uh, modifications that you can do. I probably should, but I'll have to wait until there is another beta for that because I'm not wasting my materials in, in on live for that. Four, three, Captain Skooma, who the hell's that? Are you just making names up and throwing them at me now? D and D, you're trying to learn that. All right, fair enough. Oh no, Pookie's back. How have I been? Seems like you haven't uh, watched a YouTube stream. Like, yeah, yeah, I've been lazy with my stream. Sorry, Pookie. But speaking of Pookie power, um, I am actually planning to uh, stream uh, XCOM Two tomorrow. So we get to see you absolutely go and decimate the enemy again. Decimate, decimate, uh, advent. Because you are one of the most overpowered troops I've got on that team. Was it in the ranks? I've no idea. Priya. But the thing is, I've got to say, because uh, this weekend I'm doing uh, an XCOM 2 stream. Next weekend is going to be... Uh, EDRPG again. Oh, he makes cinematic videos. I think I've heard of him, but I don't follow them. I'm not sub to them. Have you been saving your Twitch bits for Twitch streams? Yeah, that's the weird the kind of bit. I kind of stopped streaming on Twitch because I got pissed off when I uh, lost a couple of my EDRPG streams to the uh, the Twitch void. So I've started streaming on YouTube now. Grizzly UK, thank you very much for the subscription. You that is greatly appreciated. Thank you much, Lee. And Divergence, thank you very much. Uh, hello there. Oh, thank you. Hello. Yes, welcome to the chat. Is what I meant to say. Bloody hell, my brain's going all over the place, isn't it? Right now. I just remembered as well. We've we've still got. Um, oh, what's his face? Oh, say hello back to Orky for me. Yeah, we can have both of you uh, decimating Advent and tomorrow. Orky stomping around like she does at home. 
and you uh, and mind controlling people and you just literally erasing erasing um, uh, 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 basically just deleting the entire map from existence I do remember that one time we hit uh, banish with your character and uh, everything on everything invisible on the map died and it surprised the shit out of me <laughs> but yeah we got that to look forward to tomorrow and we got claptrap as well oh god claptrap I'm looking forward to doing that again tomorrow. In, in, in fact, I might actually stream it today a bit later. It really depends. I need to go... Well, I'll, if I do then... Yeah, you're a firecracker. Uh, what I might do is take about an hour's break from streaming now and maybe I'll stream some XCOM 2 after that. Because I'm getting myself I'm getting myself hyped for this now, so I want to do it now. <laughs> but I need some food. And some a hot drink because my throat started to feel like gargling razor blades again. Happy birthday, congratulations! Happy birthday with salutations! Happy birthday! May you may uh, and may your sky stay blue. Happy birthday to you. That was very nice, two nuts. Thank you much, Lil. Whoever that is, do. Hype, yes. But I thought you know what? Well, actually. I've just realised I've been just doing loads of jumping and talking with Mal. How many jumps have we got left? Holy crud, we've done over a hundred jumps today and I've not been paying attention. We've got 120 jumps left to go. Oh no, temperature critical. Get away, get away. No, stop burning my butt. There we go. This is almost like liar, liar, pants on fire. Halfway up the telephone wire. Well, there's no telephone wire here. So, shut up, Chaos. Hello there, Shadow Wolf. How's it going? All that jumping. Are your ship legs tired? Just a little bit. Now we've been doing a lot. We've been moving Mel back towards the bubble. Because we're just scanning and jumping, really. We found an earth like earlier today, which was awesome. Let's have a look at the clock at the moment. Right now it's 4pm my time. So what I'm thinking of doing is jumping off for an hour, grabbing some food and some hot drinks and coming back in about an hour to do some XCOM 2. Con, you heading back to the bull? I am indeed. We've been out with this character for bloody donkey years now. As you can see, we've only been out exploring. We've got no, no exploration, no combat. We did a bit of trading earlier just to get enough... Uh, I'll say trading. I basically dropped some palladium from one of my accounts to somebody else in the pack who held them for me and then gave them back to this account so I could sell them and afford this ship. That's it. That's all I've done. Anyway, let's get ourselves one more jump, I think. You just coughed and all the shit came out. <laughs> okay. What are you going to do? I'm at work. <laughs> 18 light years out now. I'm still a good ways out. Actually, how far am I away from Jonai now? So, home base! How far are we now? Mirror, mirror... Oh, Jonai? Jonai. Mirror, mirror... Oh, I've done it again. N. A. I. I wish I could spell. Mirror, mirror on the wall. How far away are we from home? That didn't rhyme at all, but who gives a shit? Look at that, less than 3,000 light years now. Sweet. That is awesome. Now, looking at this, where's the. Where's it gone? There it is. There's the Colonial CGs. I, there's no chance in hell I'm going over there. But, uh, yeah, alright. Do, 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 do. Because that, there's Joe 9, then there's over, over there's Kun. So we're going to head over here, dock in the station. We're not actually going to. The engineers to begin with we do have to go and dock at one of these stations i suspect we've just got outfitting uh community conflict do, 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 probably. does this one have outfitting maybe outfitting there we go so we need to go to alexanderov dock he's a spy all right who's a spy all right oh there darren w uh, welcome to chat from across the pond tfw you know what? I don't know what actually TFW stands for. 
I know I know what FTW means. But yeah, you ask a question and Chaos answers it before it pops up for him and sounds like you don't hear him answer the first time. <laughs> Alright. YouTube delay sucks. Yeah. Jump range. My jump range is about 27 light years. Colonia needs to sell a 5A frame shift drives. It takes a long time to get back to the bubble. Um, well, Super did the uh, Super teleported back. Oh, that feeling went right. Okay, thank you. I'm probably going to forget this by the next time I see this. But, yeah. Right, okay. But, yeah, we need to head here because we need to grab some cargo wrecks. Because we need to go and grab three Suntil relics before we can actually go and meet with Farsi. Uh, not Farsi, uh, Martuk. Farsi is a different one. Yeah, dev hacks. Yeah, yeah. No, what Super did is sold, sold his ship or something, or got into a sidewind, self-destructed and chose to go back to the his starting system. So he basically just teleported back 22,000 light years because he's a dirty cheat. <laughs> oh, you've been a bad girl, have you, Pookie? You haven't been on Elite for three weeks. Can't stop playing Destiny 2 with friends. Fair enough. I mean... Don't forget what happened when XCOM 2 first came out. I made 10, elite, uh, 10 XCOM 2 videos back to back and lost a lot of viewership because of it. But it gets getting a little boring now. She'll probably come back to Elite. Alright, awesome source. They're going to make an Ass Effect Gates. <laughs> yeah, that feeling went, yeah. Mass relays. D oh, you died in your anaconda. Did you not so go over to a Sidewinder? You noob. Alright, anyway. That's going to be it for this particular stream. I'm going to go take a break for an hour and I'm going to come back and we're going to stream some XCOM 2. So, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Commander Chaos Wolf from Sci-Fi Gaming. You guys, as always, have been epic. I will see you soon. And until next time, my fellow commanders, keep flying and stay shiny. Yeah, thought I'd give a little bit extra, extra kind of base to that one. So, see you in an hour.